Hi guys, it's Kino. Welcome to another video. So the topic that we're going to be looking at in today's pick a card is how and when you will come together. I'm going to explain a little bit more in detail what exactly this reading is going to entail just a bit later, but before we get into it, I want to give a huge thank you to Keen for sponsoring today's video. So if you guys have not heard of Keen yet, they are basically a huge network of vetted psychics and spiritual advisors who are there to answer any questions you may have. I've been using Keen since like end of last year, beginning of this year, it's kind of a blur, <laughs> but some of you guys might know I've been going through a very long and confusing transitional chapter in my life and I've been feeling kind of stuck with it recently and talking to the advisors on Keen has been a great help for that. So far I've gotten accurate time frame predictions, I've gotten predictions about what's gonna work out and what's not gonna work out. And in times like these, it's just really nice to get a second opinion and confirmation that everything is gonna be okay. Recently, I started talking to a new advisor, well, new for me, and I really, really like their style. They are super friendly and they have this I guess you could say like a casual tone where it just feels like I am talking to and getting advice from a friend. They're not only fast and to the point with their messages, but they're also thorough and specific and detailed, which I really, really appreciate. If you guys are interested in using Keen, I would definitely recommend to try out a few different psychics before you pick the one that you want to stick with because it's important to find somebody that really matches your style and who is going to give you the clear and direct answers that you want. But the great thing about Keen is that there are literally advisors online ready to talk to you all the time in all hours of the day and you also have the option of either talking to them on the phone or speaking to them through chat which is my preferred method because i get very nervous talking on the phone so how does one sign up for keen you might ask well the sign up process is super easy you just have to answer a few questions about your basic information how you're feeling what type of guidance you're looking for and then keen will match you with advisors who would be the best fit for you keen is always sending their users discounts too they send them all to your email and they are offering their new users their first 10 minutes for just $1.99. So if you guys are interested in giving Keen a try, you can do so using my link, trykeen.com slash Keno, which I will have down below in the description too. So thank you so, so much to Keen for sponsoring today's video. Thank you so much to you guys for listening to that. And now let's get on to the reading. Hi guys, it's Keno. Welcome to another video. So the topic of today's reading is going to be how and when you will come together with the person on your mind and I want this reading to be for any type of connection whether you have met this person already or not whether you know this person or not whether it be your soulmate your soul family your future partner or just somebody that you're thinking of you can really do this reading with anybody in mind yes so there are four readings for you guys to choose from today and I'm going to be using a different tarot deck for each reading. So here you can see what the backs of the decks look like, but I'm also going to be showing you one card out of each deck so that you can see what the artwork on the front looks like. And I'm going to be showing you guys the two of cups because I just thought that was really fitting for the topic of this video being about two people coming together. So let's show you each of those one by one. Number one is the Weaver Tarot, and here is the Two of Cups. Number two is the Muse Tarot, and here is the Two of Cups. Number three is the Moonchild Tarot, and here is the Two of Cups. And number four is the Mystical Manga Tarot, and here is the Two of Cups. So just in case you need a bit more time to decide, here are all of the Two of Cups laid out together so that you can compare the different images and see which one is calling out to you the most. As always, take all the time you need to pick. You can pause the video if you need to. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started with number one. 
Hi number ones, so if you guys chose the Weaver Tarot, this is going to be your reading all about how and when you will come together with the person you are thinking about. So I want to start off this reading with just a few oracle cards. This one is going to tell us more about the nature of your connection to this person and these ones are going to tell us what you and this person are meant to experience together in this lifetime. So the first oracle card that we have is Inner Voice and I really love this card. Um, I want to start by analyzing this number 28 here. First, by dissecting this number, we have the digit 2 and 8. And the number 2 is making me think that this is some kind of soulmate connection that we have here. And then the number 8 is making me think of past lives. So I do think that you and this person have a history of past lives together. Um, and there may be some message here as well about you guys clearing a lot of karma during this lifetime like you're closing off a cycle and moving on to new energy because if we add up these two digits we get the number one well we get 10 and then it reduces to one so this is making me think that this lifetime could be the start of a new cycle for you guys um you're stepping into a new a new and easier energy during this incarnation um, and this number one, I'm hearing it can also be indicating that this is the first lifetime that you guys have had together in a long time. Like maybe you drifted apart for a few incarnations and now you are coming back together because there's something about this incarnation that feels like fresh and new and exciting. And something else about the number one, I think that the nature of your connection with each other, it's one where you are empowering each other, supporting each other. It's like you remind each other that you guys are the leader of your own life. You are the main character and you get to create whatever life you want. I'm thinking of the number one's link to the magician, which is all about being empowered, creating and manifesting the life you want. So this is the kind of influence that you have in each other's lives. Um, so going into the meaning of inner voice that we have here, I definitely think this is a strong indication of you two having a psychic connection. You can even see, it's a little bit hard to see, but I think that these are crowns here. And so this can be talking about you guys being connected in your crown chakra. I do think this is an indicator of telepathic communication between you and this person, regardless of whether you have met them or even know who it is, I do feel that you are connected telepathically because I'm interpreting this literally as like you guys being the inner voice in each other's head, your higher selves constantly being in communication. And I'm also being told that it might be very easy to confuse your own inner dialogue with the voice of this person's higher self because your energy is so similar. So you might think you're just going through your day, having your thoughts and talking to yourself, but it's actually this person's higher self talking to you. And especially if you're having any thoughts about like, I should go for it, I should be confident, I should take action, I should believe in myself, I'm amazing. Any kind of empowering and encouraging thoughts like that that could very well be their higher self speaking those loving words to you and you do the same for them because the number one again it's like the action taker the initiator the go-getter the confident leader and that is how you make each other feel that is what the other's energy brings to you um and I'm also getting a message that this has maybe gone on since childhood I think that's maybe something I just pick up from this card pretty often but you could have had this telepathic connection since you were very young. You might have even been like each other's imaginary friends. Or again, like as a kid, when you were talking to yourself, you were actually like talking to this person in your ear, like in your mind. So this is what I see from this card. So let's take a look at these ones now and see what you two are meant to experience together in this lifetime. The first card that we have is Justice. Again, this is giving me major counter counterpart <laughs> counterpart vibes the same way the number two was um, because we do have the scales here which is like balance harmony reciprocity it does even remind me of the justice card in tarot which is that libra 
partnership kind of energy. So I do think this is somebody who is going to be significant in your life. Um, you guys complement each other really well. Again, your energies are very, very similar. And this is also giving me a feeling of karma, actually, um, if I think of the justice card in tarot. And I was picking up on that with the number eight here. And in fact, justice is sometimes the number eight in tarot. So I do think that in this lifetime, you guys will be working out things like unfinished business from your past lives or healing wounds from your past lives. And the way it's coming to me is like, this is a lifetime where you make amends, where you do right by each other. And like the lifetime where you are getting it right, so to speak. Um, and I do think both of you had have good karma coming to you in this lifetime. There's also a message in this card about the universe being fair to you or the universe favoring you. So for those of you who have been longing for this connection, trying to manifest this person, um, the universe is saying that whatever you've put into this, you are going to get out. You put in your effort, your intention, your wishes, and the universe is saying, I have heard you, I have received your wish, and I am going to deliver. Because not only is that fair to you, but that's what is natural. Like, it's natural that you would end up with this person. Justice is also about truth, what is right, what makes sense for everybody. And it's almost like the universe is saying, it makes so much sense that you would end up with this person because your counterparts and just know that your prayers aren't going unheard or unanswered, your efforts aren't going unnoticed, you will be favored in this situation. You will get the outcome that you want in this situation. And I see the way you guys are coming together during this incarnation. You have so much respect for each other. With this energy, you guys are always going to be honest, truthful, and treat each other right. That's like, that's what justice is all about. And the next card that we have here is prosperity. Um, wow, okay, so, oh yeah. This is so interesting because the number eight can also talk about abundance, prosperity, career opportunities, money. Um, I feel like both of you guys are gonna be rich. <laughs> like if I take this literally, you are gonna be rich and wealthy. This person is going to be rich and wealthy. And again, this is a card that makes me think this person will be significant in your life and be in your life for the long term because prosperity is not about just getting a bunch of abundance in one shot and then it's over. When I think of the word prosperity, it's something that is sustained and something that stays in your life for a long time. So this is this does have the potential to be a long-term connection if that's something that you want. And with this card, I really feel like you guys are going to be in each other's lives to see each other's big wins, to see each other's successes and victories. You'll be there, like we were talking about, you'll be there to cheer each other on, to encourage each other and celebrate each other. And there may even be an opportunity for you guys to come together and create prosperity together. And that gives a whole new meaning to this, uh, oh gosh, nails, to this number 28. Like, if we think of two as two people coming together, eight as creating abundance, there may be an opportunity for you guys to work together, collaborate together, if that's something that you want. But at the very least, I do see you guys by each other's side, really supporting each other and celebrating each other's wins. Um, and you make each other realize how precious you are. Look at this valuable gold money. Like you make each other feel like gold or like a million bucks. This is what I pick up. So we are gonna dive into the tarot now and get a look at your journey to each other. Um, I think I've done a format like this on my channel before, but what we're gonna do is have you on this side, um, your person on this side, and we will take a look at um, the chapter of your life that you will be in before meeting, the event or circumstances that will lead to your meeting, your first interaction or your next interaction if you've already met this person, how each of you will be feeling during this meeting and how you'll be feeling after it, and then in the middle we will put um, the final outcome. So let's shuffle this deck and see what this journey looks like. Ah, she's a thick one, so she's hard to shuffle. <laughs> All right. So 
on your side, what chapter of your life will you be in? Basically, what is your life going to look like before you come together with this person? So you'll know what to look out for. Like if, if something's happening in your life or if you're going through this right now, that might mean that this person is coming soon. What is your life going to look like? And we have the Ace of Swords. And then on their end, what is their life going to look like? We have the Sovereign of Cups, and this is the Queen of Cups in traditional tarot. So on your end over here, we do have an Ace. Any Aces will talk about a new beginning. Um, but the Ace of Swords is kind of like an epiphany that you guys are having. And I think this is pertaining to your purpose, your life path, a major decision that you want to make. Um, I kind of get breakthrough energy with this card because very often we see the sword piercing through clouds which talk about confusion or uncertainty or this energy of being bogged down. So I feel like before you meet this person, you may have been going through a phase where you feel kind of uninspired or you feel kind of stuck in life. Nothing is really like piquing your interest or making you passionate and you feel kind of very confused about what your next steps are. But then all of a sudden you have this epiphany, like this is it. This is what I want to do. This is where I need to go and suddenly it all makes sense. I really like that we have the crown here and the cr crescent, <laughs> I almost said crystal, and the crescent moon because both of these are symbols of intuition. If you think about the crown chakra, which is like, oh my gosh, they both have crowns. They both have crowns. And then there were the two crowns here, which we were talking about your psychic connection. Oh, that is cool. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, this is like you guys having an epiphany or receiving a download and then the sword represents truth and clarity. So, and maybe this is actually coming from their higher self considering that you have this psychic connection, but this is like an aha moment of the direction that you want to take your life in. Um, but it's not like you're completely out of the woods because yes, you have this epiphany about what you want to do, but now you have to figure out how to do it so while I feel you guys being very relieved and excited that you found this direction, I also feel within you still a little bit of uneasiness, still a little bit of uncertainty, because this can talk about a new beginning that is kind of challenging. So you're like, this is what I want to do, but oh my gosh, this is going to be hard. Like, I have to, maybe you have to figure out how to get the, the funds that you need to make this happen or, you know, figure out the logistics or maybe you have to do a bunch of studying or training or something like that. So it's kind of like a, no, you know what? It is a positive thing because you are heading in the right direction. It just might not feel like that just yet because, you know, the task that you have ahead of you is so overwhelming. So over on your person's end, we have the Queen of Cups. So before your person is coming together with you, they're definitely going to start to feel like their emotions are heightening. They're going to feel more sensitive than usual and not necessarily in a bad way. I think they're just going to start to feel more sensitive to the energies around them, starting to feel more empathic like they can pick up on the vibes the emotions the energies that are around them starting to feel more sentimental as well like more sentimental and caring more soft and gentle and nurturing it's kind of like that feminine side to them is waking up and this person will also be experiencing both of you guys a heightening of your psychic abilities and on this card or on this deck um, I like to focus on the oyster opening and the pearl exposing itself because I think of somebody who is really starting to open up emotionally. Um, perhaps during this time, they're going through a spiritual awakening that is leading to a lot of healing for them. Like they're revisiting old wounds, old loose ends that they didn't tie up. They're healing, they're processing everything and now they've come out on top and they finally feel like this vulnerable pearl can be exposed. Yes, maybe this person in the past has had issues with 
vulnerability issues with opening up and feeling close to people but now it's like their heart has been cracked open and they're feeling very sensitive very longing of connection very longing to I was gonna say embrace someone, embrace someone, hold someone, nurture someone. They're very, very much in their feelings and feeling very romantic. And I feel like they don't really know how this happened, how this came over them. It's like a wave just wash over them. Suddenly all of their emotions are heightened. Suddenly they're feeling the need to revisit past memories and heal from them. But what I see here is a lot of emotional growth going on for this person. Woo, okay, so now let's see. No, I don't need to do that again. <laughs> I'll just do it like this. Let's see what is the event or circumstances that are leading to your coming together. So starting on your end, we have the Conqueror of Swords and this is the Knight of Swords in traditional tarot. And on their end, hmm. on their end, we have the Six of Swords. Um, so I should mention with the Knight of Swords, we have air sign energy here with the queen of cups we have water sign energy here this could also be referring to libra this justice card um just in case that is relevant to you guys you can take that as a confirmation if you or the person you're thinking about have air or water signs um, but you definitely don't have to so on your end the event or circumstance that is leading to you coming together with this person is the Knight of Swords. And I think this is so interesting because here we see somebody holding a sword, which was your epiphany. And now we see that the sword has grown wings. So it is about to move. And of course, um, we would normally see on this card, a knight who is now holding the sword and running into battle. So you've had this epiphany and you acting on this, you putting this plan into action is what is going to bring you to this person. So basically your calling, your life purpose, the profession or the place that is calling to you is what is going to lead you to them. And it's likely because they're there waiting for you that you feel such a strong pull or that is one of the things that is making you feel such a strong pull. Um, swords is about communication. With the knight, we have forward motion. So I feel like this is you starting to put your plan out there. So let's say, for example, this epiphany that you have is about a job that you want to pursue. This would be you starting to submit a bunch of applications, starting to do a bunch of research, starting to ask around the people in your life if they know anything, starting to join communities of people who have similar experiences, like-minded people who can give you advice. This is your idea starting to spread out into the physical world. So you moving forward with this plan is what is going to bring you to this person and then on their end we have the six of swords which usually indicates some kind of travel or moving or relocation so i feel like wherever you're ending up as a result of this plan this person is going to be moving into that same area the six of swords also talks about peace oh okay the six of swords also talks about health and peace of mind so I feel like what we're seeing here, the evolution that we're seeing in this person is that before, I feel like they could easily kind of suppress their emotions and just keep going and enduring in the environment that they're in. But now that this oyster has opened and they've become a lot more sensitive to their environment, they're like, I can't be here anymore. The vibes are off. <laughs> now that they're susceptible to vibes, they realize that the vibes of their current environment are off. So maybe the vibes of their workplace or like the group that they're usually hanging around or even just like the neighborhood that they're in, the city that they're in. They're like, no, this is off. Like, I feel like I'm picking up on everybody's energy. I'm much too sensitive for this now. And I feel like wherever they're moving away to, it's because they just need 
more peace and quiet. So they, they want to move somewhere that is going to be better for their mental health, that is going to be more suited to their emotional state, which is now very, very sensitive. And actually, roses can be a symbol of sensitivity as well, or at least in this deck, <laughs> on the card that talks about sensitivity, there is a rose. So the environment that they once thrived in the environment that they once liked it's just not doing it for them anymore so they are picking up and moving as well and they are going to bump right into you mm -hmm. so now let's take a look at your first interaction or your next interaction if you have met this person before so on your end we have ooh the High Sage, and this is the High Priestess. And on their end, on their end, we have, we have the Devil. Okay, so in terms of Zodiac signs now, we have Capricorn energy here, and we have even more Water Sign energy here. Um, I'm going to start with the devil. I want to talk about the Capricorn or 10th house energy that is associated with this card. Um, maybe the first time or the next time you guys interact, there's something about them being at work or having to be professional or there's a lot of people watching them because Capricorn does talk about like our career, our profession, or the 10th house, I should say. It also talks about being in a place where everybody can see you. Maybe it's just that you guys are in public or something like that, or it could be literally like they're at work and people are watching them, but that's something that I pick up from the devil. Um, on your end, we have the high sage or the high priestess. This can also be indicating that you guys will meet at the nighttime, and actually, it could be somewhere, because I'm thinking of the devil, it's like things that people get attached to. So it could be somewhere where there's like alcohol involved, or like a lot of money, <laughs> a lot of money involved, or high profile people involved, because the devil can talk about things that we get like caught up in, it can talk about material things, so maybe it's kind of like a party atmosphere, or again, there's a lot of like important people there, um, but I feel like for you guys, somehow you just know, either you just know that this person is going to be there, or as soon as you see them, you know that this is someone special like oh yeah this person is the inner voice <laughs> this person is the inner voice that that i've always that i've always been hearing the person that i've had a psychic connection with oh this is the reason why i've had the epiphany because the high priestess is just like all knowing but she's also secretive so <laughs> while i feel like you do have this very very deep knowing of who this person is and who they're going to be in your life I think that you are going to hide that or spirit is encouraging you to hide that. So, you know, I wouldn't like blurt out right away that you feel this connection with this person or like get too giddy or too clingy to this person right away. The high sage is kind of saying to keep it cool. Like, you know, you know, but act like you don't know because she's mysterious. She's secretive. Um, and maybe this person needs a little bit of time to warm up to you or again, because of the environment that you're in or because of the people who are around, they just can't really open up. But you know what's so interesting? You see how there's like cracks in the skull? For some reason, <laughs> for some reason, this made me think like it's about to explode. So maybe this person is feeling like they have to... Um, hold back like they feel that really really strong pull too but they have to hold back because of the circumstances and just the devil energy in general this is like <laughs> being crazy attracted to somebody or being crazy tempted by somebody so i feel like they have that inner knowing too they just might be doing a really really good job of hiding it and I do think out of the two of you, this is the person who lets their ego or their negative thinking get to them more. Like here, you guys are the high priestess, so you're like 100% 
connected to your intuition. You 100% know what's going on, but they might be a little bit reserved. They might be a little bit, you know, doubting if their feelings towards you are accurate or, oh no, it's just that we have good chemistry or it's just lust or it's, we just hit it off or however they um, dismiss it. I feel like that dismissing voice of their ego might be a little bit louder than yours. Um, okay, so now we want to take a look at how how you guys will feel during the interaction and how you will feel after that. How will you feel during this interaction? So for you, we have the Conqueror of Cups. This is the Knight of Cups. And for them, woo, they're feeling flustered for sure. <laughs> they're feeling flustered. Even, I forget which card it was, but there was another card on their side that like, I was trying to shuffle the deck and it was being so messy. Yeah, they're, they're like hot and bothered. That's the energy that I pick up. They're hot and bothered during this interaction. And for them, we have, mm, we have the nine of wands. Okay, this makes a lot of sense. So on your end, we have the knight of cups. So you are going to be feeling so lovey-dovey towards this person. Like you're gonna feel like all of your soft spots are being hit, all of your heartstrings are being played. You're gonna be thinking that there's something about this person that is so cute, that is so sweet, that makes you feel very warm and fuzzy. I think that you're going to feel nurturing towards this person. Like, I just wanna protect them. I just want them to have everything that they ever want. Um, and as much as you may be trying to keep it cool or as much as spirit is encouraging you to keep it cool, I think it is going to be very, very obvious that you like this person. <laughs> um, I'm looking at the color of this card. It's so cool. Like every card in this deck kind of has different hues to it, but this one is very pink. So I'm wondering if you guys will be like blushing around this person or you're feeling very like giddy to be around them and it's just it's showing <laughs> i feel like it's really showing to them it's really coming across to them because the knight of cups does indicate like you are moving towards this person with your emotions and i think that they are going to pick up on that now over here on their end the nine of wands indicates somebody who is guarded so it makes sense like here with the devil they're trying to hold back um, I was thinking that it might just have to do with the environment or the circumstances that you're meeting in. Um, again, especially if it's like professional or if it's in public. But now that I see this nine of wands, I do think that it's like they just open up this oyster. They're just starting to feel super sensitive and then they get hit with this high level soulmate. They get hit with this intense feeling. They're like, oof. Like, I feel like they're literally gonna physically feel it in their chest when this connection hits them. And so I honestly think that they're going to be a little bit scared because looking back on this journey, you know, I used to be so chill. I used to be so fine in my environment, not very emotional. Suddenly I'm feeling so sensitive and sentimental and romantic. And suddenly I feel weird in my environment and I feel like I need to move away. And then all of a sudden this happens? Like, what does this mean? <laughs> and maybe they've never been the type to, you know, question the deeper meaning behind things or the spiritual meaning behind things. But they're like, this is too uncanny that I would go through all of this journey and then I would meet you or like I would meet somebody who makes me feel this way? Like, am I just going crazy? Like, am I just extra sensitive? Or like, what's going on? Why do I feel so intensely? And so, you know, they just opened this freaking oyster and now they're like, oh shit, do I need to close this oyster again? Like, was this a mistake? And starting to question, you know, if it's okay to live this life all sensitive. I think they just don't want to get hurt. Honestly, the nine of wands is like, 
somebody who's guarding their heart because they don't want to get hurt. So I think they're just a little bit shocked with, <laughs> with how strongly they felt during this interaction. Whereas you, like here, it looks like you're completely open with it, with this Knight of Cups. You're like, that was amazing. <laughs> the energy between us was amazing. I love that. I want to do it again. And they're like, ah! They're like scared over here on their end. But I feel like you just have a little bit more awareness of what's going on and embracing the process more. Um, okay, so let's pull our card here to see what the outcome is of this situation. What is the outcome of this situation between you two? We have the Seven of Wands. Okay, so there is definitely going to be, and we have the tower, <laughs> we have the tower at the bottom of the deck. There is definitely going to be some resistance here with this person. Um, just quickly, a specific meaning that I have seen from the Seven of Wands when it comes to counterparts is that there are a lot of like 3D barriers, so to speak, between them. So this could be like an age gap, this could be physical distance, this could be a difference in your like social status or your position. And especially with the devil here, this might be somebody like whose position not only is very important to them, like they take it very seriously, but maybe it kind of affects like what they can and can't do or how they can and can't be with the devil also being about, you know, like being held back and they're trying to protect something here. It might have something to do with like their status or their position as well. Or again, it could be like an age gap or physical distance that they're just worried about it being an issue they're worried about it getting in the way and so they're trying to protect themselves like oh relationships like this usually don't work out so i should probably you know cut this off before it gets too deep which is it's sad because i know that part of this oyster opening was your doing and part of it happening now like the reason for it was because this union or this reunion was about to happen. But instead of like opening up and fully embracing it like you, I feel like they're getting scared and resisting it because whatever these barriers are, are scaring them. Whatever big difference is on the outside at least because your energy is very, very similar. But whatever like physical tangible differences are between the two of you, it is making them afraid and they are leaning more towards the side of caution. Like, I, I don't know if this is worth it, if I'm gonna break my heart or if things are gonna go wrong or if this is gonna cause trouble. And so you might feel some resistance or some pulling away from this person. But <laughs> remember what we said up here, like you guys have a contract, you guys decided like, this is the lifetime where we get over this bullshit. <laughs> so basically when it comes to our fate, our destiny. It's something that we decided before incarnating and our spirit guides are on board. So I feel like you guys have told your spiritual team, like we want to make things right in this lifetime. We, we want to overcome these differences. We want to come together and we want to have our prosperity. This is what you guys both decided. So you have some protocol. <laughs> like if somebody's getting into this resistant guarded energy and they need a little bit of help because deep down their soul does want to break through these barriers and does want to come into this union so if their human avatar is struggling a little bit then their higher self and your spirit guides will intervene and that's why i see with the tower the tower represents divine intervention unexpected things like totally coming out of left field and I kind of feel like if this person was trying to resist, they will just keep bumping into you again and again and again. Like you will pop up everywhere. You guys will keep bumping into each other. They will see synchronicities of you everywhere or see things that remind them of you everywhere they go. See your name, hear something in a song, see angel numbers everywhere. This is the divine intervention that is going to keep popping in for them. And I think the point of this is not to like force them in any certain direction, but to show them there's no need to be afraid because you have this divine support with you. 
this divine intervention is coming in to show them that divine intervention is real, <laughs> basically. Um, when they're confused about what the meaning of all of this is, all of these synchronicities happening are going to prove to them that there is a higher power behind this. And when you have divine power and support, these physical differences are nothing. And all this person needs to know is that they're going to be safe. That's all they need to know to let this guard down. So it has nothing to do with like wanting to run away from you or not wanting to be with you. And I know in the moment it can feel like that, but they just need to know that they are safe. And so your spirit guides and your higher selves are looking at this situation and they're saying like, oh no, they're struggling to feel safe. No problem will hop in with a trillion angel numbers and a trillion confirmations that this is a divine connection, that this is meant to be, will show them that we're right here with them and that they're not going to get hurt because we won't let that happen this time. You guys made a promise to each other to overcome your pain and to make things right. And that's what we're going to do. As long as we see in your soul that this is what you still want, and they see it in both of your souls that this is what you still want, then that's what we're gonna work for because we are here to serve you. This is your spirit guides talking, by the way. So um, as much as you might feel some resistance and struggle going on, there is gonna be a divine intervention to fix that. So now we are going to take a look at some time frames to see if we could figure out when you guys will be coming together. Um, I kind of want to take, I'm going to take some cards for like your first or next interaction. And then I'll also take some cards for like your full on union, because I do think that there will be a window in between that. So for your first or your next interaction, we have feminine and <laughs> And we have first house. So in terms of the time frame, feminine signs are earth signs and water signs, which correspond to summer and fall seasons. And with the first house energy here, um, if you guys know your birth time, um, then this can be indicating when the sun is in your first house that this is when it's gonna happen. So for example, I'm a Taurus rising. So when the sun is in my first house, AKA Taurus, that would be my time frame. So we have summer, fall. This could also be like an earth sign or a water sign season, or we have um, your first house season, if that makes sense. So this is like the window for when you guys would have your next interaction. And then for your full on union, two cards that came out at the same time, we have 33 and 22. Oh my gosh, two angel numbers and they came out right next to each other. What I think this is showing is that, okay, so this is not gonna take long, is it? <laughs> Maybe some of you guys already know this person and you've already been going through the seven of wands energy because I think that this is showing like, for a lot of you that it's like within 22 to 33 days of the next time you see this person, um, you will be in your full on union. Now, if you have never met this person before, probably this is not days. <laughs> um, so this could be, if you've never ever met this person before, this might be months. So like around two years from meeting them for the first time, you will come into your full on union. And I know that may sound like a very long time, but because I feel that there is this fear, there is this resistance that needs to be worked through. Honestly, these journeys can take, they can take some time. They are not to be rushed. Now with the last deck, I want to see what does this depend on? What does the timing depend on? What could make this faster or slower? So 
So for your meeting, what does this timing depend on? Ooh, and we have the high priestess. So this was the energy that came out on your side. So the timing of you meeting this person, it looks like it largely depends on your actions. It likely depends on when you guys start to take action on this plan. Um, and what was I going to say? Oh yes, so the time frames that we had here, here I think this is showing summer or fall season. And then we also have um, when the sun is in your first house. So of course that's gonna be different for everybody, but if you take action on this epiphany that you have faster, it will be the earlier, like whichever one of these is earlier for you. But if you're taking a little bit more time, it will be whichever one of these is later for you. And then let's also take a card for your full on union. What will this timing depend on? What could make this faster or slower? And on this end, we have the Eight of Crystals or the Eight of Wands. So a couple things that are coming to me here. Um, the first thing is that this can be a card about manifestation. So this may be talking about beliefs that are either supporting or blocking your manifestation. So um, of course we cannot control like how somebody else is manifesting but what you guys could do on your end is see if you have any limiting beliefs that could be blocking this union um do a lot of journaling and a lot of scripting just so that you can always be in touch with how you are feeling and be really real and honest with yourself i'm getting a message for you guys that like toxic positivity is not going to be your friend during this journey so it won't be helpful to just script like i'm happy i'm grateful i'm fine if you're feeling frustrated if you're feeling sad whatever it is get it out just pour it out in detail about how you're feeling because it's only when we address that negativity and shine the light in the shadows that we can see what that limiting belief is it's only when we take off the band-aid and look at the wound that we know how to treat it so there's something about your manifestation abilities that are coming in here um and there's also a message about communication with the eight of wands so i almost feel like this is encouraging you if you can to stay in communication with this person to not feel like afraid to reach out to them if there's any way that you can reach out whether it's like a text message or sending them a letter or even an indirect post if that's all you can do like keep putting your feelers out to this person because on their end they're going through all these crazy like signs and synchronicities and you just never know how this can help them like they might have a dream about you and then wake up and see that you made this post about them where it's like, obviously you're not saying it's about them, but they're like, oh my gosh, like, is that about me? Um, or, or they see 1111 and then you text them right in that moment. Like you never know how your reaching out to them could align with something that they're going through on their end. That is like a huge sign or a huge confirmation to them. So being scared, being quiet, pulling away, I feel like that is not the answer here and i am noticing that it, it feels like a lot of this stuff is on you um but i think that's just because the reading is for you like if the reading was for this person we would get different advice of like this is what you need to be doing so it's not like you're doing all the work or anything like that it's just that this is the advice that is for you so um that's all the messages I have for you guys. I'm going to end the reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Um, one more thing, it feels like my ears are popping, <laughs> which I don't know what that means. It just started happening to me recently rather than like my ears ringing. It's like I feel all this pressure in my head. It feels like my ears are popping. Maybe that's just the high energy of you guys, but 
what was I saying? I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching. Um, please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. I'm sending you guys lots of love and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Hi number twos, so if you guys chose the Muse Tarot, this is going to be your reading all about how and when you will come together with the person you are thinking about. So I want to start off this reading with just a few oracle cards. This one is going to tell us more about the nature of your connection with this person, and these ones are going to tell us more about what you are meant to experience during this lifetime with your person. So the first oracle card that we have is Nourish. I want to take a moment to just look at the number 23 that we have here. So if we break this down to the digits 2 and 3, the number 2 does make me think that this is some kind of soulmate connection that we're looking at here. And with the number 3, the two of you are meant to create something together in this lifetime. You can think of the number 3 as like two coming together to birth a third. So this connection, it could very well be romantic. It doesn't have to be. So what you are creating together, it could be a child, a family. It could be a business. It could be an invention, a foundation, a movement, anything. Just you put your heads together and you birth something into the world. This is part of your purpose together. And then if we add up the digits two and three, we get the number five. So this is going to be a highly transformative relationship. Five is the number of change, growth, and development. So this is what you inspire in each other. You inspire each other to become the best version of yourselves. And this meaning of change could also be like you guys changing the world because we do have this planet Earth here. And the meaning of the Nourish card, I think of it as like, a light worker or a star seed card, or maybe that's what it actually means. <laughs> um, but this is how I see it. This looks like the earth is being replenished, like it's been thirsty, it's been craving for some new energy for so long. And I imagine you guys as like coming down from this big star onto earth to heal and replenish the earth. So you guys definitely have a big mission together. And this word nourish can also talk about like the way you two interact with each other. I feel like you guys would be very caring towards each other and as hard working as you are, always remind each other to be easy on yourself, to take time and relax, remember to drink water, remember to eat, remember to get enough sleep. I think you guys are very big on encouraging self-care in each other. So let's take a look at these spell casting oracle cards now and we're gonna see what you guys are meant to experience together in this lifetime. The first one that we have is clarity. So right away I'm noticing the reflective quality of this ball. So I'm thinking that the two of you hold up a mirror to each other so that you can see who you truly are. Um, any, it's like any inaccurate or negative perception you have of yourself, the way this person sees you is so pure that they can clear that up. You can start to see yourself in a better light and vice versa. And I think you guys are very good at perceiving the gifts and the strengths and the beauty in the other that the other might not necessarily see within themselves. Like you hold a more accurate mirror to each other. And this could also be a message of you two mirroring each other. Like there may be a lot of similarities um, with this soulmate energy coming through here. There's also something in clarity about you guys recognizing each other. So maybe when you guys were together in a past life, you like missed each other. You didn't recognize that like, oh, this is the person I have a mission with. And I'm being shown, okay, I'm being shown a very specific example of this. So. Let's say in your past life, you guys were like co-workers at a soulless job and your boss was an asshole and you just, you hated your job and you guys, as part of your soul plan, you were meant to be like, this job sucks, let's get out of here and make a business of our own and you were going to change the world with that business. But I feel like it just ended with like, this job sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. 
okay, anyway, bye. <laughs> and you kind of like maybe missed the cue or missed what you were supposed to do with each other, which like no stress, it happens to all of us. That's why we're here to incarnate many times. Um, but I feel like in this lifetime, you guys really have the clarity, not only of who you are, but who this other person is, perhaps even where your origins are from. Um, for those of you who resonate with starseed energy or having a soul family from your star origin here on earth, this is a huge confirmation of that. And clarity of your mission and clarity of your purpose here on earth. There could also be something about you guys heightening your clair abilities like heightening clairvoyance clairaudience um, as a result of this connection or as a way to deepen this connection and then the other card that we have is manifestation so yep this is the lifetime where you guys will make your dreams come true where you will manifest your deepest desires i love that at the end of her wand is it looks very much like the star here it's like you're harnessing your power that you brought from the stars, that you brought from your higher self to create your heaven on earth. That's what you guys are doing. You're creating your heaven on earth together with this person. Um, there could be a message here as well that you guys are in the process of manifesting each other right now. So the fact that the two of you come together could be like a big proof that manifestation is real. And of course, as you come together and birth something new, the two of you will be manifesting many, many beautiful things together. So. I love this energy so far. We are now going to dive into the tarot section of this reading. So I think I've done a similar format like this on my channel before, but we're gonna do your side over here and their side over here. And the different stages we will look at are what's going on in your lives before you come together, the event or circumstances that bring you together, your first meeting or your next meeting with this person if you already know them, how you feel during that meeting and how you feel since that meeting and then in the middle we will put the final outcome of this connection so let's give her a shuffle this one is much easier to shuffle than the first pile these little decks they're so easy to shuffle <laughs> so on your side what is going on in your life before you come together with this person on your end, we have the Ace of Inspiration, which is the Ace of Wands. And what is going on on your person's end? Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, recently I've learned that when a deck does that, it means that the person is thinking about you a lot. So if you know this person, if they know you already, they're thinking of you a lot. If they don't know who you are yet, then they are longing for a connection like yours. You know, they're longing to meet their soulmate. They're longing to meet their partner. They're longing to meet their soul family. Could also be that they're dreaming about you a lot because that does not require for you to know each other. But anyway, your presence and your energy are heavily on their mind. What's going on? on their end before you come together what are they going through in their life on their end we have the devil okay so i'll start over here oh first of all this is capricorn energy just in case that is relevant but <laughs> i will start over here with the ace of inspiration or the ace of wands so you're actually going to be going through a very exciting time in your life before meeting this person um this is like something has sparked your passion whether it's a new opportunity coming to you or a new project that you are starting um, it might be we might have a mixed group here for some of you i feel like it's going to be a job offer um, an offer to travel an offer to collaborate with somebody or it will just be like a new creative or business project that you're starting on your own but this marks a new chapter in your life where you feel very very excited about what you're doing before you meet this person you're gonna feel like skipping everywhere you go <laughs> because you just feel like you're in such a good mood. Everything seems to be going right in your life. You're really, really happy about the project at hand. And I also think of this as like a connection to your higher self. You guys, yes, 
before you meet this person, your Claire abilities are going to be through the roof. Um, if you've started to notice that your Claire abilities are heightening, it's probably a sign that this person is coming soon. And if you're feeling like you're in a slump, it's probably a sign that this happy moment is coming soon. The sun and the yellow and orange colors on this card give me such a happy vibe. And you're going to be channeling a lot before you meet this person. So you may be automatic writing a lot. You may be automatic speaking, which is just like when you speak out loud and channel messages from your higher self or from your guides without really thinking about what you're saying. It's something I do sometimes. And you may also be I guess you could call it automatic creating, like you're creating things that are channeled from your higher self. And with this card, I always feel a creative inspiration. So whether you guys consider yourselves to be creative people or not, I feel like before meeting this person, you are going to catch some kind of creative bug where you want to express yourself in that way and you are making a lot of things but there's some new project opportunity offer that's coming here and that's going to be like your sign. Okay. We're shifting into a new chapter and that's how you're going to come together with this person. Now over here, this is almost like opposite energy because here you are very passionate. You're very excited about what you're doing. This is an energy that feels kind of tied down and feels kind of stuck. And what I want to point out, on this card is that on the inside, I feel like your person feels the same way as you. They want to let their fiery passion burn like you. They want to transform like you are creating a new chapter in your life, but they have to put all of this stuff on the back burner because their current situation doesn't allow for them to do that. Um, I'm hearing like, Oh, and it's kind of like a repetition of what they went through in their past life where it's they're like stuck in a soulless job or what once made them passionate is not really doing it for them anymore. But because of this restrictive energy of the devil, it might be like they are bound by a contract so they can't, you know, go and do what they're passionate about or they are really, really concerned about what other people would say or they're just afraid like this can also be insecurity, fear of rejection. Um, they're maybe afraid of the material aspect, like they don't like what they're doing, but it makes good money and they're afraid of losing that. But the devil is all about those kinds of, of fears that are holding us back. So on the inside, I feel like you guys are in very similar energies before meeting each other where you're like, I want to make something new. And that's probably your your higher selves like it's time it's time to what do you call it go forward with our mission it's time to create this thing we're meant to create together so you both caught that bug you're both feeling it but i feel like you are the one who has the freedom to act on it like you're kind of the initiator and i feel like at some point you will remove the chains of the devil or the devil will catch up um and you'll come to match each other but this is kind of what it's looking like before you come together. So now let's look at the circumstance or the event that is going to bring you guys together. Circumstance or the event that will bring you together. So on your end, we have the six of materials. And on their end, The cards on their side are taking a lot more time to come out. Like the deck is moving a lot slower. So maybe this person has kind of been in a rut for some time. Like they feel kind of stuck or like they're doing the same thing day in and day out. I am getting the feeling that whatever this person does for a living, like at one point they really did love it. But because it's like they killed it, you know, when you you listen to a song that you're obsessed with and then you just listen to it on repeat so much that you you hate it or <laughs> you're like you get sick of it. I do that with food sometimes in in 2000 in 2014. I ate so many freaking dates that I couldn't eat them for years because <laughs> I just got sick of them anyway. This is how I think this person feels about their career at this point. Um, 
Okay, so here we have the Muse of Voices. This is the King of Swords. So we have some air sign energy coming through here as well. Um, so I'll start over here on your end. This to me definitely looks like a job offer. This is a job offer or this is an offer for collaboration with this pentacles energy here. Um, some of you guys might be doing freelance work or doing something creative, trying to get something off the ground. And then there's somebody who's going to come and offer to help you, whether that's through collaboration or um, like commissioning you, offering you a position to work on some project with them. There's, you get it, there's some kind of offer like this that is coming to you. And this person is also, they're also a member of your soul family and they volunteered to be like, a catalyst in bringing you to this person. That's like part of their role in the script that you guys wrote. And I do think that you could become good friends with this person as well, even though they're the one who's like offering you, hiring you or taking you on for this project. It doesn't really have a feeling of a power dynamic of like, you know, they're above you or anything like that. Um, because the person who would normally be up here in the six of pentacles is missing like it's just you guys coming together so maybe you're both like independent creators you're both freelance you're both your own bosses and they just really like you and decided to give you this offer because i don't see that like higher up man like the man or the middle man who is like who is bringing you guys together if that makes sense um and actually i just realized maybe this person is the king of swords that we see here so this would be an air sign gemini libra aquarius yeah i feel like this is the third party who's bringing you together um it could be somebody who is older than you but it doesn't have to be the fact that they're coming out as a king or the muse it could just mean that they have more experience than you in your field they have more knowledge than you and the king of swords is somebody who gives very very good advice this is someone who's going to teach you everything you need to know to get to where you want to be and also protect you from any like pitfalls or any sketchiness in your field if there is any and i think they're coming out on this person's side because they know your person so hmm what kind of relationship is this i'm gonna actually i want to take a clarifier for this you are finding this person what did i just do <laughs> you're finding this person because you're putting your work out there you're moving forward with your project and okay the high priestess so these people are contemporaries as well because when i think of the high priestess it's like with the number two again it's like equality people who are on the same level yes and i just i just realized too even we have like the mirrored image here and there's no like upper man <laughs> they're both just equals you guys are both just equals yeah so this looks like a more kind of friendly relationship um it will be your person's friend or acquaintance and then you are collaborating with them and that's how you're gonna come together so so on that note, let's see what your first meeting is like. How is, this, how is this going to happen? The person could also be a water sign. Air sign, water sign. Oh, man. <laughs> yep, you are heavily on their mind. Okay, so we have the four of voices on your end. And on their end, we have the Knight of Emotions. Okay, so I think that even though this is like a collaborative relationship and you guys might collaborate together, I don't think you guys are meeting in a work environment. You have the Four of Voices or the Four of Swords on your end. This is a card about rest and inaction. So the way you guys are meeting is somebody is inviting you. Somebody is calling on you to come. I feel like you're not the one to make the first move here oh 
Okay, okay, I get it. Ooh, okay, it's all coming together now. <laughs> so, you are going to be on your day off and you don't want to do anything. <laughs> you might even be fully like in the bath, about to go to bed. You might even be in bed, like no makeup on, watching, watching Netflix, watching your drama. And then this person calls you and is like, hey, you're coming out tonight. You're like, oh no. <laughs> Cause you were thinking like you're just going to rest. It's like she's coming in to disrupt you from your peaceful time and saying, no, you're coming out tonight. You have to come out. I don't know what's gonna happen, but eventually they convince you to come out. Now, let's talk a little bit about this third party person who is in the reading. Um, they have met you and they have met your person and they're highly intuitive this one because they're from this star origin as well they they're highly intuitive they're also a light worker and <laughs> they can just tell oh my gosh the two of you will go together so well i just know it i just know it this person will love you so they're thinking that like right away after meeting you so this person goes over to the devil and they're like, hey, I met somebody and they're like this and this and this. And then they go on to describe you. And you remember how the devil is, is thinking about you so much and longing for you so much. So they're going to hear your description and be like, holy shit. That's exactly the person I'm longing for. That's exactly the person I see myself with. That's exactly the person I dream about. So they're going to be like, I want to meet this person. So it's not like the third party was like, oh, I'm going to invite you and invite them. And oh, you happen to meet. No, it's your person is going to say, introduce me. Like I have to meet this person because with the night of emotions, this is them moving towards you. You're just chilling over here. You like, you have no idea this is going on. <laughs> and they, they hear all about you and they're like, okay, so introduce me like now. <laughs> And I just saw 2222 on the camera timer. Um, so they are fulfilling their role as part of this soul contract. Maybe that's why the number three is here. Cause it's like your three members of the soul family. And this third member in this lifetime has volunteered to bring you guys together. Oh, okay. For those of you, I don't know, this might be for just like one person. You know that past life example that I gave where it's like you guys are coworkers and you're in the job that you don't like. I feel like this person was also like in the workplace with you and they were meant to be a catalyst during that time as well. They were meant to be, maybe they were your boss in that life. Maybe they were another coworker in that life, but they were meant to be a catalyst. This is like the dynamic that you guys are trying to figure out and that I think you're getting right in this lifetime. So they hear about you, they have to meet you. And I really like this, um, the snail shell, that's, yep. The snail shell behind the person's head. It reminds me of a card in the wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron reed I forget what it is. I think it's round and round where the spiral out of the head is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It means that someone planted a seed in their head and they're thinking more and more and more about you until it's like consuming them and they just have to move towards you. So this person has an intuitive feeling as well that, that you're going to be somebody special because when they hear about you from this other person and all of these things that you've accomplished and how amazing you are, it's going to like hit them right in the heart, you know, because there's bits of your soul in there. There's bits of your mission in there and there's bits of like your home of your origin in there. So their soul is like, ah, that's my home. That's my people. And they just, they have to, they have to connect with you. So it's going to be their, their doing. They're the one who's making this happen. So now let's take a look at how you are feeling during this meeting. For you, we have justice. Okay. And how are they feeling? Oh, <laughs> during this meeting, we have the world. 
All right, so we have Libra energy here with justice. Um, this could also be Capricorn energy again because the world is ruled by or associated with the planet Saturn. So that could be a double Capricorn happening here. Um, but justice is the card of balance, harmony. You're obviously going to think you have a ton in common with this person. You're probably going to feel like we would be a perfect match together. The communication between the two of you is going to flow so smoothly. Um, and here, this to me looks like you're coming out of your shell. Like this is your mask that you wear around most people. And then this is like your true self. And then this is like your genius <laughs> coming out. And maybe, you know, I think most of us do. When we meet a new person, usually we operate from this for a while. And then when we feel comfortable, we can break this open and be our true self. But I feel like as soon as you meet this person, like the mask just comes off. It's like, it's like you're catching up with an old friend that you, you know, that you've met a million times. That's what it's going to feel like when you are around this person. Um, and with the 11 here, it may be that you really feel that you have manifested this, that you've manifested this encounter and everything feels so natural everything feels so right and on their end with the world this is like fulfillment this is completion so they feel like you are exactly what they wanted and you're exactly what they dreamed you would be because they had this idea of you when they were longing for you when they were fantasizing about you and then you know when this person spoke about you to them their idea formed a little bit more and now that you're finally together in the flesh, they're like, yep, this is exactly, this is exactly what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> you're exactly what I thought you were going to be. Uh, I, I'm sorry if that sounds weird, but it's like everything they ever dreamed of is, is you. And I'm noticing that we have the globe like weighing on their head. So maybe even just from this time that you're meeting here, they start to have the vision of what you guys are meant to create together. And I just noticed we have 11, which adds up to two. We have the world, which adds up to three. And that is the number that was describing your connection. So 23 might be an important number for you guys. Um, but this is like the knowledge that you are some kind of soulmates and the knowledge that you're meant to create something together that's going to be so very clear right from your first meeting with the world as well this can be somebody who feels very proud to know you very proud to associate with you um, they want to show you off i do feel like you guys are going to meet in public it kind of feels like a going out to drink or going out to eat kind of situation um, or going to like an event like a concert or something together but they're gonna feel so good to be seen with you like look at this cool and crazy attractive person that i'm talking to right now and really really hoping that you feel the same but i think also on a deep level knowing that you do this can also be a sign of you guys um like being from different countries or, or having different backgrounds or something like that as well so Let's take our final card now to see what is the outcome going to be of this connection. And we have two cards that came out on the same time. We have the Eight of Inspiration, which is the Eight of Wands. And we have the Ace of Voices, which is the Ace of Swords. And we also have at the bottom of the deck, the Knight of Materials, which is the Knight of Pentacles. I take the bottom one because I, I took it for pile one and so I thought it would be fair to take it for you guys too. Um, all right, so over here with the Eight of Inspiration or the Eight of Wands, I feel like you guys are definitely going to exchange contact information like immediately when you meet this person and you will continue to be in contact with them like ever since. The Ace of Voices actually confirms that as well because this is all about open and honest communication. And I feel like with you guys, it's really gonna be like no funny business, no playing games, no wasting time. You're very, very clear of what you are to the other person. You have this clarity like we saw at the beginning of the reading. So both of these are very fast moving. This connection can escalate very very quickly to whatever its fullest fruition is whether that's like 
a romantic relationship, a business relationship, a friendship, a physical relationship, all of the above, like whatever is the final form of this connection that you guys are manifesting, um, I think you're gonna get there quite quickly and you guys like will not go a day without talking. Even if that's not your style normally, you will just be constantly talking to this person because it feels so it feels so natural. I think introverts will know what I'm talking about. Like when you're with somebody and it's just as relaxing as being alone, like you don't feel drained at all. And then that's really, really special because you just feel so like natural and effortless and comfortable and exactly authentically you together. Um, and eight of wands is also about manifestation. So I think once you guys come together, things are going to manifest into your life so quickly the little things the big things everything in between life is speeding up and it's almost like this is going to sound kind of cheesy maybe but like you united on planet earth and like you know you're gonna do something really positive for the earth so it's like the earth is excited <laughs> i feel so cheesy even saying it but like the earth is excited that you guys are together and then things start speeding up for you or things just start like going right for you you might find that you guys become like incredibly lucky after this union. Um, with the Ace of Voices here or the Ace of Swords, when it comes to a connection, I do think of this as like a straightforward conversation about what the relationship is or a straightforward confession. So again, if this is meant to be romantic, that intention is gonna come out in conversation like very soon and in a very direct way. So there's no guessing. It's like, I want you to be my partner or you know, I want to work on this with you. I want to do this with you. That will be like put out there very um, openly. But I also think with the image that we have here, you see how this person is turning away, but there's like the light coming out of their head and there's also the owl. You guys have this clarity and this deep knowing of what the other person is thinking, what the other person wants to say, even if they don't outright say it like that's that's the kind of connection that you guys have you're totally totally tapped into each other with the knight of materials here i do feel whatever the dynamic is of this relationship you will be creating abundance together and you will be in each other's lives for a long time or the potential is there because the knight of materials is something that is like consistently and steadily moving forward bringing value to your life, bringing stability to your life, bringing security to your life. Um, it's a really, really nice card to come out with all of this crazy, hectic, fast energy. You guys might get really, really busy after meeting this person, whether it's like your own projects are taking off or like you're busy working on all this stuff. But it's like this person is constant in your life every day. I feel like you guys are talking every day. You're meeting very often. And so it's like, no matter how crazy my life gets and no matter how quickly or drastically things are changing, I know that you will be the constant in my life. And their higher self wants you to know that even if you're not together right now, like you haven't met yet or you haven't met in a long time or whatever it might be, um, they will still be that, that constant presence for you in spirit. So if you're ever feeling overwhelmed or stressed or discouraged just tap into them because they'll they'll be right there they're always they're always right there okay so in the last part of this reading i'm gonna see if we can get some time frames for you guys of when this might happen i'm going to offer i did this for pile one which i don't know if i've done it this way before because i feel like it was a little bit messy in the last group as i tried to figure it out but i'm gonna pull like an earlier time frame and a later time frame and then we'll pull some cards to see what that depends on like what would make it the earlier one and what would make it the later one because i feel like normally i give i just give the time frame and I don't know how accurate that is because time is not set in stone. Like so many things could, could speed it up or slow it down. So I'm gonna try it this way and see how it goes. So first, let's pull the earlier time frame, and we have Neptune. So this could be indicative of Pisces season. That's the earlier one. 
And then the later time frame. What is the later time frame? The later time frame is Libra. So um, you guys could be coming together as soon as the next Pisces season from whenever you're watching until the following Libra season after that. So for example, if you're watching this in 2021, um, when this is uploaded, that would be like February 2022 to like October 2022. So kind of a big window. So, okay. So I'm just going to take... Should I just take one? I think I'll just take one <laughs> um, to see what this depends on, like what could make this faster or slower. And we have the Queen of Cups. The vibe that this card is giving me, I feel like this plan is very much in the hands of your soul with this card being like very psychic, very spiritual. I think there's already a divine plan put into place here and that maybe this big window is coming out because like some of you guys watching are more towards this end others of you are more towards this end so what can you tell me about those who are watching who are on the earlier end seven of cups and those who are on the later end. How can we identify those who are on the later end? Queen of Crystals. Hmm. Okay. So there's definitely messages of you guys like starting a new project, finding new inspiration, and it, okay, this sounds kind of weird, but like, <laughs> so the Seven of Cups is this energy that is kind of overwhelmed, kind of confused. So what I'm being shown here is like those of you who, who have been feeling kind of confused about your current situation, confused about the direction of your life, maybe you're feeling kind of spacey you guys might not be sleeping very well or having very vivid dreams then for you guys it's the earlier time frame because they're telling me that like this disoriented feeling that you guys are going through it's part of your previous life dismantling like if you're feeling confused about your life right now it's because it's being dismantled and you're about to be shown the direction that you're going to head in and if you've been feeling spacey not sleeping well having weird dreams this is because your psychic abilities are heightening so if you resonate with this energy then it's going to be the earlier one now for those of you who are feeling pretty put together <laughs> feeling pretty put together feeling pretty confident you feel like your life is pretty pre predictable right now you know the direction that it's going in it's going to be the later one. And, and that doesn't mean that you guys are like delaying it. It just means that you're on a different schedule and your life is not meant to be dismantled yet. <laughs> like you're still in the chapter where you're meant to feel like you know what you're doing. You still have some value to be gained here, some accomplishments to reach. Like you're still in this phase. Um, <laughs> and when you start feeling like things are getting kind of weird, <laughs> things are getting kind of unstable in your life, that will be the sign that like, okay, this chapter of my life is about to end and I'm about to start something new. Okay, so um, those are all the messages that I have for you guys. So I'm gonna end the reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose a topic, that will be linked down below too. I'm sending you guys lots of love, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye! Hi, number threes. So, if you guys chose the Moon Child Tarot, this is going to be a reading all about how you and the person you are thinking of will be coming together. 
Um, so I do want to start off this reading with a few oracle cards. This one is going to tell us more about the nature of your connection with this person and these ones will tell us more about what you and this person are meant to experience together in this lifetime. So starting with your first oracle card, we have color. Now for all of the readings, I have been sort of analyzing the number that appears here. For you guys, we have the number 40, which is made up of course of four and zero. Four is about divine order, a divine plan, and zero is about infinite potential. So what I feel like this is saying when it comes to your connection is that you and this other soul did plan to meet each other, but when it comes to what you do with this connection and, and where it goes and what you experience together, I feel like it's very much up to you. So when you were writing this script with your higher selves and with your spirit guides, I feel like you were a little bit more open about what happens after your meeting. You just knew that you wanted to meet, you wanted to come into each other's lives, but I don't see you guys going so far as to say like, we're gonna have this kind of relationship, like they're gonna say this to me and I'm gonna do that with them. I feel like it's very, very open. That's what the feeling of zero gives me. And maybe this is a little bit of a reach, but the word color, I'm thinking of like, you guys got the outline and then you are free to fill it in with whatever color you want. So this connection that we're looking at here you have the ability to fill it in or to make it whatever you want to make it. It's not written in stone for you. Um, looking at the meaning of color and this image that we have here, starting off with the heart, I do feel that you guys will really feel for each other, will really have a soft, soft spot for each other. You will get along very well and truly want the best for each other. Um, and be very empathetic towards each other. Like you really understand each other's emotions and where the other person is coming from. And if you don't, then you have a deep longing to learn so that you can figure it out. I do feel that naturally you guys will gravitate towards each other and feel really warm and fond about each other. But with color, I often think of this as like differences and diversity. So you two as people, you might be very different. And as you get to know each other, you will see more and more that there are these differences between you. But if you're open to learning and if you're open to seeing a new perspective, this can add a lot of richness and a lot of color to your life. And as much as there may be differences between you, I feel like a big part of this relationship is you guys learning to let your true colors shine through and to let your true colors be seen. This is somebody with whom you have the poten potential. I don't know why I can't talk today. <laughs> I can never talk. <laughs> you really have the potential to blossom and to let all aspects of yourself shine through. This color can also be an indication of you guys being like from different backgrounds, from different cultures or having different stories. I feel like at the very least as humans, you guys have a lot of differences between you. So your relationship might look like you guys learning about and working through these differences, coming to embrace the other person, and through all of that, coming to embrace yourself as well. But how you do this and how you go about this, it looks like it's very much up to you. Um, the last thing I want to say with this card is that I think you guys make each other really, really happy. Like adding color and adding vividness to someone's life, it's a very beautiful thing. So I think both of you will be very, very happy that you have met each other. It seems a little bit vague, like what type of connection this is so far. And while these Oracle cards are supposed to tell us, you know, what you are meant to experience in this lifetime together, maybe I'm going to pull these as what potential this connection has to become. Just because of this zero here, it's really making me think to leave things open. So the next Oracle cards that we have for you are Peace and willpower, interesting. So starting over here with peace, I do think that despite whatever differences you, you guys may have, there is potential for you to overcome them and be very compatible and very harmonious together. There's also a message coming through with this. If, if this is somebody you know and you have history with and there's been any sort of 
conflict or hard feelings, something that kind of went wrong with this person, I do feel like you have the potential to make amends. You have the potential to make peace with what happened and be harmonious with each other again. And if there's any unrest in your soul, if there's any frustration in your soul, any uncertainty in your soul about this connection, that can be remedied as well. You can find peace for the unrest. You can find a solution to the frustration. So if you know this person, this is not meant to just, you know, break off with you still having all of these questions, still feeling, you know, upset about what happened. Basically, any conflict is meant to be resolved. And I really do see that you guys have the potential to be harmonious together. And with the message of willpower, it's so interesting that this comes out because with this color card, I was really feeling like a lot of this connection is going to be left up to your free will, what you and this person want to make it. So when it comes to your divine guidance telling you what to do or telling you what is meant to happen, I don't think that you guys are going to be getting a lot of messages like that. And maybe this is something that you've found, like as you watch readings or as you yourself ask your divine guidance, you might find that you kind of get vague answers about this connection. And the reason for that is not because they're trying to, you know, hide something from you or anything like that. I think the truth of it is that it's very much up to you. And if I can say anything about what this lifetime for you is meant to be or about what it could be, I think it's relying more on your own desire and your own actions rather than some script or some plan that was previously written out for you. And that might be something that you and this person kind of missed out on in a past life where it was like you both wanted to be together, but you were both saying like, oh, if it's meant to be, it will just happen. Um, and as a result, maybe fell into this energy of inaction or passivity or maybe you weren't confident enough to go for it, so you kept waiting and waiting for another sign, another confirmation, another green light that I meant to go for it. And in this lifetime, it's like your guides are saying, use your own willpower. Like if you want to be with this person, if you want to manifest this person into your life, you can make it happen. And you don't have to worry so much about like, what is our soul connection? What is the label to put on this? Are we meant to be? Um, there's definitely a place for fate and those kinds of plans and i've talked about this in videos before where like from soul to soul we can see varying degrees of fate versus free will in their life based on what they wanted to experience but i feel like in this lifetime you guys really really wanted to experience free will wanted to experience a blank canvas that you can make this connection whatever you want it to be so if you guys have been, I guess this could even be your sign actually. <laughs> if you guys have been waiting for a sign to go for this connection, if you guys have been waiting for a green light, like this is your green light. I feel like, yeah, too often in past lives, there's been like a fear of taking action, passivity. So it's very much up to you guys to make this happen. And with this piece here as well, like if I put these together, it's like, at the end of the day, your guides want you to be at peace knowing that you did everything you could to make this connection work if you want to make it work. Like, no matter what happens, whether you guys end up together forever or for some time or not at all, can you be at peace knowing, like, I use my willpower to move this connection in the direction I wanted it to, to the best of my ability? So you're really being called in this lifetime. Use your willpower, trust your desire and take that action and to not keep waiting for something on the outside to tell you or to make it happen for you. This is yours. There's infinite potential here, infinite potential. So we are gonna get into the tarot part of this reading now to see your journey towards each other, how and when you are gonna come together. So I think I've done a similar format in previous readings on my channel, but basically your side is gonna be over here, your person's side is gonna be over here, and the different stages that we're gonna look at are what your life is looking like before you come together, 
the event or circumstances that lead to you coming together, your first interaction or your next interaction, if you already know this person, the next time you meet, how you feel from that meeting and how you feel after that meeting. And then in the middle, we will have the final outcome of this connection. So let's start over on your side and see what is your life going to be looking like before you come together with this person? What is your life looking like? Okay, um, we have two cards coming out. Should we take both of them? Yes. So we have the Ten of Swords and the Devil on your side. There's Capricorn energy appearing here in case that is significant. And on their side, we have the Three of Cups. So of course, this is a general reading. And I even said in the intro of this video, like you can ask about anybody, whether you've met them yet or not, whether you know them or they know you or not. I'm just going to say that for the majority of you, this does look like the energy of people who have history together and who are in a separation because what I see over here with the Ten of Swords and the Devil on your end is that there has been an ending in your life and you can't get over it. Even though something has moved on and left your life, you can't seem to stop thinking about the past. You can't seem to move on from what happened. And I just, with this peace, like you guys are meant to find peace, I just couldn't help but think maybe this is referring to a breakup or a separation that happened with this person. Um, it definitely doesn't have to be. This could be something else ending in your life. Um, but with the swords being in the person's back, it's either like they didn't see this ending coming, so it was very sudden to them. And there may even be a feeling of them feeling betrayed by it. So whatever was broken off here, it's like you expected the other party to be there for you or to you know hold out or to work through this together but then they just ended it so it's like completely out of left field you feel hurt by it and with the devil this is like your mind is stuck on something you still feel powerless from something and you can't you can't let go of what happened so i see you in this kind of dwelling in the past energy and over here and this is also why I thought like, why I thought this might be a separation between you guys, because I also feel that there is dissatisfaction on the end of your person, but they are trying to cover it up. When it comes to connections like this, the three of cups tells me that this person is like going out with friends or going out and trying to meet other people or using things like drinking, entertainment, any kind of distraction so that they can feel lighthearted and they can feel carefree, but are really um, diverting their attention from their truest and deepest emotions. This energy is just way too lighthearted for the situation that I'm seeing here. And I can't help but feel that it is like some kind of avoidant or passive energy that we see on their end now again if this is not somebody that you know and this is not a separation um it could be that this person is dissatisfied with the way their life is and they are just trying to cover it up with shallow things and shallow distractions just to make the days brighter just to make the days easier for them for some of you guys this person might be with a third party, like in a relationship with another person or just with a group of people that don't really resonate with them or that aren't really serving their highest good. Like it could be a friend group, it could be a company that they're in. They're kind of in a tough place. They're out of alignment, but it feels like they're not acknowledging it. So it's like here we have a hyper awareness of what is going on and here we kind of have a lack of awareness or a lack of acknowledgement. So let's take a couple cards now to see the circumstance or the event that will bring you into your union or into your reunion. 
um, this is too many, but the fact that all of these cards are spilling out so much, and this happened for another pile as well, whoever this person is on the other end, they are thinking of you a lot, or they are missing you a lot, or they are longing to meet you if they haven't met you yet. But you, or the idea of you, or the energy of you is on their mind a lot. So for the event or circumstance that leads to your meeting, on your end here, we have the emperor. And on their end, we have the five of swords. Okay, so I am thinking that I'm gonna start with the interpretation of if you guys already have a history and if you guys already know this person, have been involved with this person. So like we saw earlier, it does look like you guys may be having a little bit of a harder time mentally or emotionally because you are acknowledging and choosing to feel all of the emotions that arise. But what I see here with the emperor is that you guys are dedicated to yourself and you are dedicated to your healing and you're not going to give up on yourself. This is a very empowering energy here. And maybe some of you guys might be like standing your ground that you are not going to reach out to this person or that you're not going to contact them because you're trying to be strong and you're trying to accept and make peace from what happened. Now over on their end, we see the five of swords and it's so interesting the way like all of the swords are pointing at this person it's almost like they are being faced with the truth like they cannot hide anymore and you see how like colorful this card is versus the grayness here i feel like this is reality hitting them so Oh, and it's so interesting too. We have three and five. Whenever I see like three and five together, I think of like 3D for versus the 5D. So in the 3D, this is them being happy, pretending like everything's fine. But from a soul level, I feel like, I feel like their soul is aching. And there is some wake up call, some divine intervention that is coming to them because this is about conflict this is about saying like no you're wrong no this is wrong so whatever it is something is hitting them of like this is not the life i want to live this is not what is making me happy if you guys had a conflict this might be them thinking about it and realizing that they were in the wrong or realizing in what ways they were in the wrong and five represents a moment of change five represents a moment of pivoting so i feel like if you guys have history with this person, it's going to be them who is moving towards you. They are going to be reaching out to you. They are going to be asking to get together and to reunite with you because they just can't, they can't escape what you have been so bravely feeling and processing. They can't escape that any longer and they will feel the need to reach out to you and make things right. Now, for those of you who do not know this person yet and you're wondering how they are going to be coming into your life, I still think what we are seeing here is that it will be them making an action towards you rather than the other way around because the number four that we have here, it's a very stable and solid number. We don't normally see like change or movement with this number, but with five, this is about change. This is about development. So this is the energy that is moving here. So your guides are asking you to just, like if you guys are worried about, I don't know this person yet and I want them to come in, I feel like this is saying you guys are doing everything right. The emperor is consistent, he doesn't budge. Your guides are saying you're exactly on the right track. Keep doing what you're doing and be confident and patient. That's exactly what the emperor stands for. Confidence, patience, perseverance, and empowerment. So you guys really need to believe in yourselves and know, know that you're doing all of the right things to bring this person in. Now, as for the energy of your person here, the event or circumstance that is going to lead to them finding you, I think is breaking free from this dissatisfying life. And they, with this five of swords here, they might get a bit of, um, 
a bit of flack from that because here we had the energy of like friends and community this is an energy of conflict and it does look like people turning against them so i feel like in some way or another and i don't want to like worry you guys but i feel like this person is in an environment that is not only out of alignment for them but just in general might be a little bit toxic like they might be surrounded by small-minded people or by negative people people who want to keep this person down or keep them in their box and so by their breaking free from this life this is how they are going to find you and they are going to come into your life that you already have going so this is kind of a different energy from the first two piles where i see you having to make some big change or start some new project or whatever it is um, but i feel like you guys don't have to think about this that much you keep living the life that you are living exactly as you are now like keep going to work or going to school exactly as you are now keep with your hobbies your responsibilities your lifestyle and this person is going to come in and find you they might be in a different totally different situation from you right now but they are like they've snapped they can't live this life anymore and they are craving something different so they are probably going to start leaning towards a life that is more similar to yours so just for an example if you guys part of your routine is like you go to the gym a lot then this person is saying like man i need to start a new healthy routine i need to start going to the gym and then they end up at your gym or they end up going to school in the same program as you to like get their life together or whatever it is but they're breaking free from this i need to stop pretending like i don't care and that everything is fine and i need to face this nagging feeling and do something about it and they will just plop right into the life that you already have going for yourself so now we will take a look at your first interaction or your next interaction if you already know this person it's so weird for you guys like a million cards are always wanting to fall out you're so heavily on each other's minds, whether you know each other or not. So on your end, we have the five of pentacles for your first interaction or your next interaction. And on their end, we have the eight of swords. Okay, so in your first interaction, these are actually painting a picture together that I can understand. So on your end, you see how we have this massive, this massive full moon behind the person. This means that your emotions are going to be running very, very high when you see this person. You're going to be feeling very strongly towards them. Um, if you do have a history, maybe emotions from the past are coming flooded in, or if you haven't met this person yet, there will be some huge intuitive recognition of who this is that will cause a downpour of emotions within you and you notice that this person is like naked so you might feel bare and exposed around this person you might feel like they can read you like a book and there's going to be this feeling of i missed you again whether you know them or not i missed you like your soul has been longing for them on their end they have the eight of swords and you can see the contrast while this person is nude this person is wearing a veil so there's still parts of this person's true self that they are not showing or they are holding back in this interaction and this is definitely due to a lack of confidence so if you have a history with this person it might be that they're embarrassed about what happened in the past or you know they're trying to express how they feel but part of them is still holding back they might just be having a hard time putting their emotions into words and conveying the depth of what they really feel they might be nervous around you they might be anxious um because this is very much an energy of like getting in your head and closing off because of of your fears because of your mental barriers 
So this person is definitely holding back a bit. If you haven't met this person before, they're definitely just like nervous or insecure around you. They don't want to mess things up, but that could cause them to be coming off as a little bit a little bit distant towards you and the five of pentacles is also about like a lack or a loneliness so i feel like in this interaction that we're seeing here it's like it feels like this person is pulling away and being and being distant and so that causes you to feel a little bit lonely because here you are with this big blown up full moon full of emotion here you are like naked in front of this person feeling like you're bearing all and then they're wearing this veil and even in this artwork it looks like they are turning away from you so it, it will be like kind of a anxious interaction for them and if i'm being honest it does look like a little bit of a disappointing interaction but remember that this is just one interaction we are seeing here we have still yet to see what can happen after this so and there we go again with a million cards trying to fly out <laughs> Um, on your end, what? how do you feel after this interaction or since this interaction? Here we have Justice and the Empress. So this is all on your end. Um, so coming out of this interaction, you guys are really focused on yourselves. You're really focused on your healing and you're starting to think a lot. You're starting to think a lot, a lot about this connection, a lot about the exchange that you had. And you're realizing, I'm this empress. I deserve the best. <laughs> I deserve the world. I deserve to be treated like royalty. This is what I want for myself. I want an empress connection. Empress is unconditional love, acceptance, nurturing, joy, fertility. This is the kind of high level connection that you want. And justice, first of all, I think this is talking about you being deserving, being deserving of this and recognizing that you do, but realizing like, I need somebody who is a match to the empress that I've become. You guys, I'm really proud of you guys because for whatever painful ending you experienced here, you took the hard way, you made it through the devil energy and you came out as the freaking emperor. You came out healed, you came out confident, you came out empowered. And you realize you're this empress, so when you show up to this interaction and you get the five of pentacles, you're like, no, I'm not the five of pentacles, I'm the empress. So I'm gonna keep being the empress and I need to find somebody who is a match to this. And so I see you guys in this reflective energy of like, is this person really my justice? Is this person really my match? And justice is all about weighing, weighing the pros and cons, weighing your options and finding what is right. And it's also about balancing your head and your heart. So I see you guys thinking really hard about like, what does my head think about this person in this connection? What does my heart feel about this person in this connection? And really having to come to a decision because you're moving up, you're leveling up, you're both the emperor and the empress. So this can be speaking of you guys balancing your masculine and feminine energies, balancing your head and your heart. You guys are moving up in life and I feel like you can't and, and wouldn't wait for this person forever as much as you may love them and want the best for them you need to have this equal energy exchange in your life so let's see on their end we have the six of swords so how they are feeling since the interaction there is so much there's so much swords energy and the six of swords represents a desire for communication so I feel like this person is wanting to try again. This person is wanting to reach out to you again. Probably they have a recognition that they they fumbled here, they got nervous, they got anxious, but they're not done. The Six of Swords, they want to move towards you, they want to communicate with you. Six is a number of unconditional love, of harmony, of balance. So this person is not gonna give up that easily. <laughs> and they recognize like, shit, that was not the way I wanted that interaction to go. I just got in my head. And while these cards represent a kind of turbulent mental state, the Six of Swords actually represents a very peaceful one. So I feel like after this interaction, that's gonna like kick them into gear to really find their calm, find their inner peace, restore their mental health, 
get their stuff together and I feel like they're not gonna come back until they get their stuff together because they don't want a repeat of what happened in this interaction here but they're finding their peace they're finding their health and this is like a hundred percent they have a desire to reach out again they see you as the empress as well and they know that you need justice they know that you need an equal counterpart and I'm telling you this person is not going to give up. Again, <laughs> it's totally up to you. It's your free will. Like if you, if you're going to wait for this person, but they're not going anywhere and they're not giving up. Okay. Just, so, just so you guys know, <laughs> this is their willpower. All right. So now in the middle, we are going to see, I guess we can see this as what the potential of this connection is. I don't want to set a final outcome for you guys so firmly in stone because I feel like that goes against this free will energy that we saw in the beginning of the reading. So what is the potential for you two? What is the potential for this connection? What is the potential? Ace of Wands. So there is a potential for a breakthrough here. There is a potential for a new beginning. I love the Ace of Wands. The Ace of Wands is like my favorite ace. Um, it's a new beginning that brings back joy, that brings back passion, that brings back color, that brings back inspiration. It looks like both of you have gone through it, like in your respective lives and within this connection as well. And the Ace of Wands is a chance to start over. And I think the number zero speaks to that as well. Despite what you guys have gone through, despite your history in this current incarnation or in past incarnations, there is a chance for you guys to start over or to start new if this is a new person. With the Ace of Wands, this is actually another card that makes me think they are coming towards you and not the other way around. So again, you guys just keep doing what you're doing and keep doing you and this person is moving towards you. Um, this is what I see for this pile. So if this is a new person, maybe the first interaction didn't go so well, but they're gonna work on it. <laughs> they're gonna center themselves. They're gonna get their mind straight and they're gonna come back to you with another offer. And actually same thing, if this is somebody that you have history with, they're gonna get their shit together and come back to you. And all your guys are saying like, you have done enough, okay? You've done everything that you can for this connection. Um, so just keep focusing on yourself and living your life. They're the one, yeah, they're the one who's gonna move towards you. So for the final part of this reading, I'm gonna see if we can get a time frame. Um, I will, I'll do it for, cause there's kind of two unions in this. There's like you unite here and then you unite here. So I'm gonna take a time frame for each of those. Starting with the first interaction that we see here. We have the seventh house and eight. So for the concept of this spread here, I'm thinking of this as six to eight months. The reason I say this is because the seventh house is like the opposite of the first house, opposite from where you are. And when I think of signs that are in opposition, they're six months apart. So um, six to eight months for the first interaction. However, if you have history with this person, it could be six to eight weeks. And for the full on union, the potential for the full on union, when can this happen? We have Grand Cross. And two. Okay, so the full on union would happen two to three months after the first interaction or the next interaction. Um, I know that there's a lot here, so I'll just um, repeat that. For those of you who don't know this person yet, you will meet in six to eight months and you will get together two to three months after that. 
For those of you who already have history with this person, you will reunite in six to eight weeks and get back together maybe two to three weeks after that because I think it's faster for those of you who already know this person. Um, and for this one, I don't feel called to take... Hmm. Let's take one for each. I wanted to take these tarot cards to see what does this timing depend on because as you guys know, timing is not so strictly set in stone. It can be faster, it can be slower. So I just wanna take a card to see what does the timing of your first meeting or your next meeting depend on? What does the timing depend on? And we have the five of diamonds and this is the five of pentacles. So that's a repeat of a card that we got on your side. So what I'm seeing here with the five of diamonds, this is a feeling of lack, a feeling of loneliness, a feeling of not being enough or not having enough. I feel like because you guys have the ability to see yourselves as the empress, you keep investing in your life. You keep moving forward with your life and striving for the best for yourself. And this person is coming into your life like we saw, as you're just naturally working on yourself. But if you start to get this insecure feeling or this lack mentality, it may prevent you from taking the actions that you would otherwise take um, to get to the place where you meet this person. Um, I would like to give a concrete example of this. I'll just use the gym example again because it was an easy example that I use previously. Um, if you guys are really in this empress energy, feeling like you deserve the best, like you deserve to be happy and work on yourself, that will keep you in the right rhythm and in the right lifestyle and routine for this person to come in and find you. But let's say you are feeling very down on yourself, you're feeling unworthy, you might be in that kind of mentality of like, what's the point? Like, this is not going to make me happy anyway and sort of opt out of the opportunities or the actions that you could take. So that is something that could speed this up or slow this down. Right now, I feel like a lot of you guys are in this Empress energy where you're working towards what is best for you. So you're definitely right on track. But if you ever get that feeling like, oh, maybe I shouldn't bother doing that because I'm not going to be good at it or it's not going to make me happy. It's not going to work anyway. If you ever get into this kind of pessimistic or defeat sort of mentality, this could be something that slows down the timeline for you. So let's also take a card over here for your full on union and see what does this timing depend on. It's so hard to pick these up. And so here we have the seven of crystals. This is the seven of wands. So I feel like this is more the energy of the other person, especially because this potential for the new beginning, it is coming from their reaching out, their extending to you, their desire to have a heart to heart with you and work things through. The seven of crystals is like, it's fighting, it's resisting our feelings. So this person feels very, very strongly for you. It's, it's clear that they do, but what could maybe speed this up or slow this down is if they are resisting their feelings, if they're resisting the urge to move forward. And this is something on their end, so it's not something that's necessarily directly in your control, but if you are ever picking up on this person's energy, and you feel like they're resisting, if you feel like they're weak, if you feel like they're afraid, if you feel like they're struggling, and if you do feel called to do so, I always believe that we can send loving and healing energy to our person. I'm just noticing now so late, but you guys have the number four here and you also have a heart. So in your heart space, in your heart chakra, you guys are very, very closely connected. And maybe you are picking up on this person's emotion sometimes. So when they feel stressed or are struggling, you feel it too and vice versa. So if you cultivate joy in your life, they can feel it. So just living, living your joy is going to send them joy. But 
If you felt called to do so, you can send this person loving, joyous, healing intentions, and that is gonna help to ease the resistance or the fear that they feel. Okay, so this is everything I'm seeing for you guys. I'm gonna end the reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching, and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. I'm sending you guys lots of love, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hi number fours, so if you guys chose the mystical manga tarot, this is going to be a reading all about how and when you will come together with the person that you are thinking of. So I want to start off this reading with just a few oracle cards. This card is going to give us more insight into the nature of your connection with this person, and then these two are going to give us more information about what the two of you are meant to experience together in this lifetime. So. The first oracle card that we have is transformation. So um, I wanna start by analyzing this number here, which I've been doing for all of the readings. You guys have the number 19, which if we break this off into the numbers one and nine, what I can say about this connection between you and your person, which probably you can already tell from transformation, but when this person steps into your life, and vice versa, it truly does feel like a new chapter has begun. And I would almost go so far to say, like when you meet this person, when you lock eyes with them, it might sound a little bit cheesy, but it's like something within you just shifts and you are never the same. And and maybe it's that a certain emotion within you is unlocked, like you didn't know you could feel awe in the way that you did when you met them. You didn't know that you could feel inspiration or love or compassion in the way that you did when you met them. Something is activated in you guys when you meet each other. This is what I'm seeing with the number one here. And the number nine is about awakening, about developing our spiritual gifts, about ascending, about healing. So there's something about this connection that is also awakening your spirituality. It could be that ever since you meet this person, your psychic abilities start to heighten, or you just find yourself pondering more about the deeper meaning behind things. And I've, I've seen this quite a bit, like, you know, meeting this person that you feel so strongly about, it does get you interested in spirituality and, you know, what's the deeper journey behind here? And that sort of like bleeds out into other areas of your life. You start to think about what is my purpose here? What is my lesson here? So I feel like you guys are opening each other's eyes in that way and could also just be because you activated each other that your psychic abilities start to heighten. But I think it's also really cool that we have number one and nine here because it's like, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. There was another pile in which I saw, oh, this looks like your first incarnation together in a cycle of incarnations. For you guys, I feel like this lifetime that you have with this person, it might be the final incarnation of a certain cycle. Who's to say what you're gonna do after that? I don't know, that's up to you guys, but you might decide to incarnate somewhere else for the next few lifetimes, or you might decide to stay in the soul world. You might decide to guide other earthbound souls, or you might come back here, but with a different dynamic. But I just feel like maybe this lifetime is like one where you are wrapping something up because you've reached your full potential together and now you're gonna switch things up. But either way, this is a deeply awakening and deeply transformative connection that we are looking at here. Um, I feel like this is somebody who may actually be instrumental in helping you guys to find your mission, like helping you guys to find your purpose in this world, whether it is through their advice or through, you know, talking things through with them, or maybe they do something that you look up to and that really inspires you. It's like they're instrumental or they're a catalyst in you finding your calling. Another thing I'm seeing, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna be cheesy again, but doesn't this kind of look like an eye? I know it's like the world with, with rays coming out of it, but it looks like that's the pupil and then this is like the iris. So I was thinking of like, I see the whole world when I look in your eyes or like I see the galaxy when I look in your eyes or, or something like that. 
Probably you guys are very poetic, but when I try to do it, it just comes off as cheesy. So now we are going to look at the following oracle cards to see what the two of you are meant to experience in this lifetime. And we, <laughs> we have transformation again. Um, all right. So is there anything that I can add? Is there anything new that I can add with this transformation? Um, I guess I just want to say that ever since meeting each other, you guys will grow and evolve so much. And it really does feel like the birth of a new era when you come together. I don't know if I want to ramble on twice about transformation, but just take the fact that this came out twice as a sign that this is a hugely transformative connection. will change you, will change your life, will change your perspective, the way you view the world, okay? <laughs> um, in a very beautiful way. And also the number T might be important because we have like two initial T's that are coming out. So this could be like somebody's first or last name, could be um, the sign of Taurus. Um, it could also be the name of a place, like a city, country, company, or something like that. And for your other Oracle card, we have career. So it looks like you're also instrumental in each other's career path and in each other's success. And again, this can play out in many different ways. This can be that you are working together. This can be that you are collaborating and starting a business together. It could be that you just, you give each other really, really good advice when it comes to your career path because you can see the other person's gifts and talents and you see what lights them up. So you can give them that push in the right direction. It could be that you offer each other a ton of emotional support to keep going when things get tough so that you can move into the, the direction of your abundance. Um, it could be that you pursuing your career is what's gonna lead you to this person or vice versa, but somehow the career is involved here. So we are gonna dive into the tarot now to see how and when the two of you will come together. So I think I've done a similar format like this on my channel before, but basically you are gonna be on this side and your person is gonna be on this side and the different stages that we will look at is what is going on in your life before you come together? Cause this could give you a hint, you know, like if I'm going through this now, maybe that means they're coming soon. And then we are gonna see the event or circumstances that bring the two of you together. We are then gonna see your first meeting or your next meeting, if you already know this person. Then we're gonna see how you feel from that meeting and how you feel after that meeting. And then in the middle, we are going to put the final outcome of your connection. So that's how it's gonna go. Let's give our deck a little shuffle here. I love this deck. All right, so the first, okay. <laughs> the first thing that we're gonna look at which flew out um, is what your life is looking like before this person comes into your life. And we have the Hermit. So there's Virgo energy here in case it's relevant for you. Oh no, is the kitten playing with her toy? Toot. <laughs> okay, I'll keep an eye on her and if she gets if she gets too rambunctious, I can put her in the other room. She really likes when I shuffle cards though, so she might jump up here again. And what was your person's life or what will your person's life be looking like? before you come together. Can I just say you guys have a very nice vibe. This group has a very, very nice vibe. <laughs> it's putting me in a good mood. We have, look, the nine of pentacles. So we have double nine and we also had the nine up here. So that might be an important number for you guys. Um, if you see like 99, 999, 1919, something like that. That could be a sign that this person is near or that your union or reunion is drawing near, just overall letting you know that you're on the right path. So with the hermit here, um, I feel that you guys are really going to be diving deep into your spirituality before meeting this person. Kind of like we talked about at the beginning of the reading, the hermit is on a quest to find deeper meaning 
to find out who he truly is, to find out what his purpose is. So before you come into union with this person, those like big questions are really, really going to be weighing on your mind. Like, who am I? Who is my soul? What is my purpose? Where is my home? What direction do I want to go in? What impact do I want to leave on the world? You know, those big life questions, these are going to be really, really heavy on your mind and you will be in the pursuit of them. Many of you guys during this time, you're going to start to feel highly sensitive to energies around you and it might be overwhelming to be around people or to have too much external stimula stimulation. I almost said simulation. <laughs> so you might find during this time that you really just want to be alone. Um, I'm hearing you guys might be sleeping a lot more than normal. Like you might be feeling very tired and sluggish as you release old energy and download new energy that can take a toll on our physical body. You might actually feel a little under the weather at times and just like, I don't feel like being super active or super stimulated or super social. I feel like in this energy, you're very much keeping to yourself, like the card Hermit would literally suggest, um, consuming a lot of spiritual content or delving within and finding it yourself, whichever feels right for you, um, but really, really connecting to your inner divine wisdom. You may also find during this time, you're meditating a lot, you are having very lucid dreams or even experiencing astral travel, and you may be experiencing kind of six senses, like clairvoyance, clairaudience, claircognizance, clairsentience. But the things that you were once able to do, no problem, I feel like they're becoming tiring to you. Because as you dislodge from your old self, the things that you're no longer in alignment with are gonna like it's like, it's like you're wearing an ill-fitting suit that is like poking at you in the wrong places. This is what it's gonna feel like when you've shed your skin, you've come out of your cocoon, but you're still in your old life. So if you find that things are really draining you, really tiring you, they might just no longer have a place in your life, but this is you really evolving and leveling up and coming back to yourself. And from this point on, you are living life guided by your soul. Guiding by your, guided by your own inner wisdom. And probably at this point, you're also gonna be, you're gonna stop really giving a shit <laughs> what people think about you. Things that you used to care about so much, especially like material or superficial things, things you used to care about and be so anxious about, they just stop bothering you. And it's like, wow, it's amazing how much energy I have when I just stop giving a shit about on important things. <laughs> so you're gonna feel really liberated here. There may be a bit of an uncomfortable and tiring purging process, but once you come out of this, you are feeling liberated. So this is like, it looks like some form of ascension that you guys are going through before meeting this person. And then over here on their end, this is like major success in their career. The nine of pentacles is a successful business, a successful job, especially when it comes to self-employment. Um, I am getting the feeling like both of you guys have this energy where you're very much just doing your own thing, marching to the beat of your own drum. Um, you're here to create the change. What is it? Be the change. <laughs> Be the change you want to see in the world and, and create a new world that is to your liking as divine creators. So look how proud she is of herself. She's living her best life. This person is living their best life before you come into it and you're only going to make it even better but they love what they're doing. Likely they are self-employed, but it, it doesn't have to be. They just love what they're doing. They love the people that they're around. They have a wonderful balance of work, rest, social life, loan time, um, very abundant. They get to enjoy the finer things in life and then they get to enjoy the simple things of just going outside and being in nature. Very well-rounded, very, very balanced lifestyle that this person is living. And they feel truly very happy. Aw, with this little bird here, I don't always pay attention to this little bird, but today I feel called to. Um, before you meet this person, they're going to start some little project of like sharing their thoughts. 
whether that's like they're gonna start a social media page or just start posting on the social media they already have a little bit more um, maybe they're gonna like start a blog or start posting videos or start writing a book even if it's not published yet they just they want to start expressing themselves more they're, they're catching a little bug of like hmm maybe i should share my my thoughts and ideas with people because they like they have everything going for them in their life they're successful they're wealthy they're fulfilled they're like hmm, maybe i should maybe i should pick up a new little hobby and this bird is so tiny i don't think that they're thinking much about it but <laughs> i just really felt called to mention that bird so maybe it has something to do with like how you guys will find each other but so cool you guys both got number nines you guys both got earth energy because this is pentacles and then virgo is an earth sign that's cool all right so now we're gonna take a couple cards to see the event or the circumstances that lead you to each other the event or circumstances that lead you to your first meeting or to your next meeting we have the emperor and this came out for group three as well and i think i'm gonna take it as the same interpretation these even kind of look like the same person just that in the hermit card he has a hood <laughs> this is aries energy by the way and what oh <laughs> the tower all right so <laughs> um you guys both have major arcana for the events or the circumstances that are going to lead you to each other this tells me that it is in the hands of fate so you're not necessarily actively looking for or moving towards this person they're not necessarily act actively looking for or moving towards you at least you don't think you are and it, it's something completely unexpected completely unpredictable it's a fated event that is going to lead you together i guess i should say it like okay let's just say for example this is romantic a romantic connection um, although it doesn't have to be but this is just for my example like you might be doing something that you think you're actively looking for them like going on a dating app or something but the way they come into your life it's not going to be from your active efforts like it's just gonna happen to you. It's just gonna fall into your lap. And it's gonna be them falling into your lap and not the other way around. Them coming into your world and into your life. And this is what I saw when the emperor came out for the last reading, but now that I see them with the tower, that's very much the case. So you're just over here doing you, doing your own thing. You can even see the emperor is like looking towards the hermit i'm just so focused on myself i'm focused on my higher self i'm living my best life this might be like when you've come out of your hermit mode feeling a lot more confident feeling a lot more sure of yourself and you're starting to build a new structure in your life the emperor is all about stability security protection so you're building up your new life this person something's hitting the fan for them um <laughs> i wonder because there are two people here if this is a romantic connection they might have been like with somebody else and then that's that relationship is breaking up maybe that's just very specific for some of you um but something unexpected is happening in their life and i feel you know what i think they're gonna be okay it might just be a little bit shocking because here we really saw like we have they have this beautiful structure they have this well-rounded life they're loving their life they have everything going for them and then this tower moment is just like hitting them in the face completely out of nowhere they fall out of their tower and into the emperor into the emperor's lap <laughs> and it's such opposite energy this is so sturdy and this is so like chaotic but this is divine redirection i'm sure this is something that you guys um that you guys planned to have it happen this way um i kind of do want to take a clarifier about the tower to see what this like unexpected event is that is landing them into your life what is your person's tower moment related to 
what is the unexpected change coming to them? We have the Six of Cups. It seems like, okay, so this is a card about your past, your comfort zone, your home. It's almost like this person strayed away from your home. And so this tower moment was to like bring them back. And I am thinking of this, hmm, wait a minute. Okay, I, I have two different interpretations for this. For some of you guys, this is like a geographical thing where this person is far away. And so they're being like pushed back to the location where you are. Like something is making them like literally physically come back home. For others, this is career related. This person, oh, well, maybe for a lot of you it's career related because we do have career here. I feel like you guys have a very, very similar passion, a very similar purpose, a very similar direction in terms of your career path. And what this person has become very successful in it may not be necessarily exactly that because what I see here is like a little innocent child and this will resonate especially for those of you who have like known what you wanted to do since you were a kid or there's something you really love or really good at as a kid and I feel like for you guys it's the same thing so like when you were like five, if you wanted to be an author, then this person wanted to be an author when they were five. If you wanted to be a doctor, they wanted to be a doctor. Like that childhood dream, I feel is the same. And although this person has found a lot of success and fulfillment for themselves, I feel like whatever they're doing here is not their childhood dream. So they're like, hello. <laughs> their inner child's like, hello, you never addressed me. You never made this dream come true. And so something would happen to their career, something would fall apart within their career, would be a little bit of a crisis. Like, what am I supposed to do? What is the meaning of this? But eventually would dawn on them. Like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe the universe did this to me because my inner child was crying out and still wanting to live out their passion. I was so focused on you know, growing up and becoming this successful adult and having all this money. Then I started to ignore my inner child a little bit. Some of you guys might be mirroring this person in that respect. If you find like this is resonating with your situation, I just felt called to say that. Um, but this childhood dream for them, it's not gonna go away. So yeah, okay, for many of you, it will be related to their career could also be location, like something's happening to bring them back to where you are. Um, and maybe this little bird that's like whispering in their ear has to do with their childhood dream. The thing that they're starting to dabble in again, the thoughts that they're starting to share again, it has to do with their dream career. Um, whatever you guys are passionate about, you may want to as well. Start writing about it, start posting about it, start talking and sharing your ideas about it. Let's get a little bit of light over here. So now we're gonna see your first meeting or again, your next meeting if you already know this person. So you're doing you, they're falling into your life because they're coming back to their home. They're coming back to their soul's home. This is a soulmate card by the way and a very strong one at that the deepest feeling of belonging, comfort, familiarity, recognition. Like, again, cheesy, but you look into their eyes and that's, that's your home. That's your nostalgia. Deeply, deeply familiar. Your first interaction or your next one. So on your end, we have the moon. So we have some Pisces energy coming through. And on their end, we have the eight of wands. Okay, so yeah, they're falling into your life. I feel like this person is going to be the one to like reach out to you and ask you out. With the moon here, 
you guys could be meeting each other at night or this could be an indication that you guys are like spending the night together because here we have like the night sky going into the morning sky so this could be like an overnight situation um make of that what you will you guys can do whatever you want <laughs> in that time um it could just be like because this is about communication a lot of ideas spilling out and with the moon it's like you're getting lost you're losing track of time it could be that you guys just spend the whole night like talking and, and sharing your passion um i do feel that you will meet as a result of a shared passion like you guys will end up in the same place like at the same event, at the same job, at the same class, in the same community because of this shared passion. And then they are going to invite you to hang out and be like alone with them. And then you spend a whole night talking or partying or listening to music or whatever, whatever it is that you want to do. <laughs> um, all right. So um, is this, no, this part is just about your first interaction. So um, with the eight of wands here, this is a card that not only talks about communication, like we spoke about talking a lot. I feel like this person is going to be really, really talkative around you. And you see how this person, like there's these hands like throwing the wands down. It's like they had this big load. <laughs> they had this big load that they wanted to throw on you. I'm sorry. Um, well, maybe, maybe you're welcome. Um, <laughs> they have all of these ideas pent up, all of this passion. And maybe the thing that you guys are passionate about is a little bit unusual, a little bit niche. Like it's not that many people who would get it. Like you can share with some people about it, but they'll just be like, oh, interesting. And not really have much to add or not really receive it in the way that makes you excited. So I think when they meet you and it's like, not only do you have this shared interest, but like, you're amazing. You guys get along so well, you're super wise. You're super confident, very, very attractive. They're just gonna, this is not a shy person. This is not a nervous person. They're gonna like spill everything that they're passionate about with you. So you'll have a lot, a lot to talk about. And I think they will be very, talkative when this person is talkative it's a sign that they are giddy um and that they feel safe as well um that's like their inner child coming out i feel like when this person was a kid they just like meh, meh, meh. they would talk anybody's ear off they would talk to kids they would talk to adults they just yeah and that's the little birdie that's a little bird who wants them to get back into sharing their ideas so you're somebody who helps to awaken that within them to like speak their truth again, to be chatty again, to share what's on their mind again. And they're so, so happy to be able to converse with you in this way. This is also about manifestation. So I do believe that this person was manifesting you, whether they tried to or not. And this is also an indication that your relationship will grow very, very quickly. Now over here on your side, when it comes to the moon, there is a feeling of something being surreal so you might feel that being with this person feels surreal like it, do it doesn't feel real that this amazing person could be in front of you um if it's a specific person the fact that it's like them it's them it's, they're in the flesh they're here and we're together that might just feel like too good to be true for you could also feel surreal because in your spiritual awakening you've picked up a lot of information about this person and it's all being reflected to you it's all being confirmed to you when you're together in the 3d so you're like holy shit am i psychic psychic because <laughs> the moon is like a very a very psychic energy as well but the energy between you two is just amazing like you're both in an amazing mood you're both having an amazing time and i love that because how nice is it to fall from the tower and land in the six of cups isn't that the smoothest freaking landing you've ever seen <laughs> Isn't it though? Good for them. Good for you for, for being there to catch them. I, you know what? I didn't think they were going to be too nervous about it. They're like, where is this taking me? Because with you guys both having the number nine, I feel like you are the type of people who really believe that everything happens for a reason. 
and you know there's always a deeper meaning behind things i don't think this is a type of person to like you know to be like oh crap this happened that sucks oh well <laughs> they're like no this happened why did this happen let's find the deeper meaning what am i supposed to be paying attention to here they have that like introspective and inquisitive nature to them much like you the hermit so yeah let's okay let's take some other cards this is going to show us um what is happening after your meeting so how you're feeling after this meeting and leading up to your final outcome so okay for you <laughs> you're definitely thinking about this person a lot after the meeting hence the 40 cards that just fell out um yeah, this person is going to be really, really heavy on your mind after you see them. There's something about, what is it called? When you're like glowing after a, after a particularly um, joyful encounter, <laughs> you're just glowing. You is it afterglow? Is that the right word? Oh, that reminds me. I think there's a, a nice song with that name, maybe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, <laughs> but... Yeah, you just feel like you're on cloud nine. Maybe you kind of feel like you can't come back down to earth. I still can't believe that was real. It feels like a dream. It's like a fantasy come true. So yeah, the lovers. I f yeah, you're going to be thinking about them a lot. You're going to be um, fantasizing about them a lot. You might have some, you know, quite intimate dreams with this person after your meeting and this always makes me think of like the red thread of fate you can think of this angel up here as like the angel that brought them together i just realized it's all major arcana on your end that's crazy um you're definitely divinely guided here but the lovers can also talk about a psychic connection so rather than you just dreaming about them i feel like you guys are actually meeting and visiting in the astral realm and and, and doing what you're doing <laughs> in the astral realm um and yeah i feel you're going to be kind of spacey during this time kind of dreamy interacting with them very frequently in other realms and in telepathic communication with them and you just can't stop thinking about them you guys will probably still be in communication frequently with this Gemini energy. Oh yeah, this is Gemini energy. Yeah, and the Ace of Swords on their end. So yeah, you have Gemini, Air, Mercury energy. They have Air energy here. Yeah, you guys are definitely talking a lot after this meeting. You're talking a lot in the 3D. You're talking a lot in the astral realm. You are totally connected. Um, I honestly don't really have any further way to interpret this like you came together and you are staying together um oh the ace of swords it can talk about like a very open direct honest conversation so when it comes to a relationship i think of it as like a straightforward confession so we did see with the eight of wands that your relationship is probably going to be escalating pretty quickly and with the ace of swords here as well i do think that they're gonna like pop the question to you so to speak pretty early on like i like you I want this kind of relationship with you because um, like I said this person is not shy and when you have the six of cups here this is like the deepest familiarity like you just know and when you just know things happen fast so yes this is moving quickly so let's pull a card now here to see the final outcome the final outcome of your connection What is the final outcome? Knight of coins. Okay. And ooh, the bottom card. I have been taking the, the bottom card as well. And we have the Hierophant here, um, which is Taurus energy. But the Hierophant is a highly committed and formal partnership. Like you are bound by something so this can be marriage 
this can very, very well be marriage that we are seeing here, or it can be like a formal business agreement, like you're together in a contract, you both have your name on this business, or it could be both. Because, I mean, we do have that career message here, you guys have a shared passion. Obviously, there's been a lot of chemistry, a lot of sparks flying um, in this reading, so I'm sure that many of you are asking about a romantic connection. If not, I'm sorry, that's awkward. Please ignore all of the the spicy things I was saying. Um, <laughs> but yes, this is like a formal union, a formal matrimony that we see here with the Hierophant. This is you guys committing to each other and stepping in. Oh, and look, it's the red thread again. I just notice it. Yeah, you see? It's the red thread again that is binding you guys together, the faded connection. And you have Taurus energy here, which is like um, money, abundance, prosperity. Uh, I was gonna say sustenance, but you know, <laughs> being supported and being, um, being prosperous. With this Mercury energy here as well, with this bird and Taurus is making me think of like your voice. I'm sure there's a reason for that. And also five being the throat chakra. Um, you guys will be like sharing your voice or sharing your message will be a part of your life purpose. So maybe you guys are meant to write a book or you're meant to be speakers somewhere or <laughs> meant to be on social media or you're meant to sing or something like that. You guys are meant to use your voice Use your voice to communicate your ideas. Maybe you're going to be teachers, you know, talk into the, you know, the class. <laughs> um, and with the Knight of Coins here as well, you guys are in it for the long haul. This is a connection. And there was a, there was a really, really similar, there was another pile that had the Eight of Wands and the, the Knight of Coins too. And the Ace of Swords. They all came out together. I think it was group two. So I don't know if you guys felt drawn to group two as well, but they had all three of these cards and it was a really similar energy where, yes, it escalates quickly, but it's also sustained and carried out into the long term. Grows quickly and then is sustained. Mm -hmm. So Knight of Coins shows that you guys are in it for the long run together through all of the ups and downs. Like the Knight of Coins, is it always shows me this journey that like, it might be difficult. It might not be linear. You have your good days, you have your bad days. Sometimes you move forward, sometimes you fall back. And isn't that what a commitment is all about? It's like, I will take you, I will be with you and support you even on your shittiest day or week or month. When it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year, I'll be there for you. Mm -hmm. This is what's, yeah, this is what this is all amounting to. Aww. It's so sweet. Um, you guys are like each other's, each other's angel, each other's guardian angel. You'll be there to support and protect no matter what. And definitely you're creating abundance together too. Yay. Okay, so, um, oh my God, where are the, oops. I left the other decks <laughs> on the other table. My bad. So, I have a couple more decks that I want to use. Sorry about that. And <laughs> this is going to give us time frames. So for you guys, there are two that we need to look at because we want to look at when this first meeting interaction or next meeting interaction is happening. And then we also want to look at when this, you know, full fledged commitment matrimony is happening. So I'm going to take time frames for both of those. What I've been doing in the previous readings, um, it's kind of a new thing that I'm trying out. So it, it still feels a little bit messy. So please bear with me. But for each event, I wanted to take like a potential early time and a potential late time. So it could be like between this or this, and then pull a tarot card to say, what does that depend on? You know? So like, for example, if I said, this is going to happen in one to two years, well, depending on what, like what would make it 
closer to one year and what would make it closer to two years because you know it's not set in stone and certain actions and circumstances can you know bend the time so i kind of wanted to try that out to make it a little bit more open and so that you guys feel like you have more control or more free will over the acceleration or slowing of the timelines so we're gonna start with this first meeting here and two came out at the same time that's perfect so for the early time of you guys meeting we have five and for the late time we have new moon so i'm gonna take the new moon to mean like a month after this because of a full moon cycle so hmm is this five weeks or is this five months? This is five months, five to six months for the first meeting or for the next meeting. And the time frame for your ultimate matrimony. <laughs> I don't know why I keep using that word so much. Thank you. It's two at the same time again. So for the early time, we have Venus. Quick, does anybody know what a Venus year is? Well, it's less than a year. You know, like how long it takes Venus to go around the sun. <laughs> and we have eighth house. So I'm going to say for this one, let me just do a little bit of math. <laughs> I'm trying to think of, okay. From the first house to the eighth house, obviously it's seven. So I would say, holy crap. So it is really fast. Um, between like seven months to a year from your first meeting actually less than a year because a venus year is shorter than an earth year let's say seven to eleven <laughs> seven to eleven months from your first meeting or your next meeting is going to be when you reach maybe like your engagement or your partnership like your full commitment the promise to be together in the long term so now we are going to take one tarot card for each of these and just see what these time frames are dependent on. Like what could speed it up and what could slow it down. So for your first meeting, what is this time frame dependent on? Oh, I should also say like if this commitment, it doesn't have to be like you're literally getting married. <laughs> it can just be like you're getting into a relationship because I realize that some people watching this are very, very young and it's not like you're gonna get married in like a year and a half or whatever. So um, it can just be like a committed relationship. Um, so we have the eight of diamonds or the eight of pentacles. So this is a card that talks about putting in work, whether it's putting in the work on our career or putting in the work on ourselves. So honestly, I saw both of you guys, like you're putting in the work on yourself here. When your person falls from the tower, they're getting right back up. So I'm not really worried about this um, eight of pentacles energy. I guess it's like, how hard do you want to work on it? It's a little bit of like, you know, if you're asking when will my essay be done, it's like, well, it depends how many pages you want to write in a day. Like if you want to take your time, it's going to take a little bit longer and that's fine. If you want to write, like sit down and write the whole thing in one go, you can do that too. So this being faster or slower, it's not like better or worse. I think sometimes we tend to think of later as worse because we feel like, oh, the universe is withholding my gift. The universe is delaying something. But it's like, no, it just depends like how much you want to do in a certain period of time. So just know that if things are slow, it doesn't mean that it's not coming. Like if you sit down to write a 10 page essay, eventually you're going to get to 10 pages, at least in this hypothetical situation, <laughs> like it's going to happen anyway. And then what is dependent, wait, what is the timing of your committed 
relationship dependent on and we have the two of swords what is this talking about okay so at the bottom of the deck we have five of diamonds and we also have the four of crystals which is four of wands which is the wedding card again so could just be that like this is a person that you eventually will i don't know i keep wanting to use the word matrimony and i keep thinking of of marriage coming up here um, and now the camera timer says 44 44 um all right so when it comes to your love when it comes to your passion when it comes to how happy you make each other um the the joy is there the joy is really there here it seems like you guys are on the fence about something and it's not like whether or not you should enter into this commitment i think it's about the timing like should we do it now or should we wait a bit because this was like there was a few months of a window here and it has something to do with it has something to do with money so you know if you guys are starting a new career path one or both of you you're, you're trying to get a project off the ground maybe like in the case that this is a wedding or something maybe you're like we don't have enough money for a wedding yet or we or you're talking about moving in together and you're like i don't know if we have enough money for the house that we want yet or or something like that or if it's a business i don't know if we have enough to invest in the business yet there's something surrounding money or material things that you might be like oh, should we should we do this yet or not or should we like wait a little bit wait until our projects are doing better and we have a bit more saved so again this indecision is not should we do it or not it's just should we do it now or later and that's why i think we see kind of um a bigger window here but in any case it really does look like this is coming in and escalating very very quickly and i'm sure whatever it is that you guys need the universe is going to provide you with it because you are the universe's star students yeah <laughs> um okay so that's all the messages I have for you guys. So I'm going to end the reading here. Thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching. And I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself. Stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon. So if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose a topic, that will be linked down below too. I'm sending you guys lots of love and I will see you in the next one. Say goodbye, Tootie. Hehehehe <laughs>